Hello, hello everyone. Author D.L. Tillery here, the mistress of horror, and the author of the soon to be released Aliastro Tale of the Light Virgin. That's why we're all here tonight. So um, if you've read the title of the live stream, this is the live stream launch party for the Kickstarter for Kali Astro Tale of the Light Virgin Book One. Um, so I'm excited. It's been a stressful time. <laughs> so I'm happy that this day is arrived <laughs> so I can maybe calm down a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have a few guests on. Hopefully a few other people are going to be able to make it. If they don't, then it's cool too. Some people will be in the chat who's going to be popping in maybe. Um, but, but Aphrodite Lee, the goddess, is here to join me, of course, as she's always like my ride or die. <laughs> Like for real. Look, I was thinking I was gonna be more like a die today. <laughs> like she was trying. She was, oh, I got good. <laughs> My voice but, is <laughs> But it's um, it is actually, you know, I don't know. The energies are very, very high with Kickstarter. It's very difficult. So yeah, um, <laughs> I'm glad again that this day is here and to share it with everyone. I'm going to actually launch the Kickstarter live here. Oh, with everyone <laughs> so i actually pressed the button so i have that pre prepared for this um but i'm gonna let go ahead, go ahead and let aphrodite introduce herself before we jump into everything sorry <laughs> oh you're good that was my alarm like don't fuck up <laughs> reminders <laughs> so hello everyone am i looking straight yes right you are yeah hello um i'm aphrodite lee it's been a long time since I've done this, so I'm a little green. Um, God, I feel like I've never done it. She does it all the time, don't you? I don't know. <laughs> well, you need to tell them about you know, what you do as an author, what you have. I'm an author. I write predominantly paranormal um, fantasy with spicy paranormal fantasy. Um, my first book wasn't any of those things. <laughs> it was, uh, well, I, technically my first book was very erotic. Yeah. But erotic. my <laughs> official first book was a coming of age tale. And it's called Shattered. If you haven't read it already, what are you waiting for? Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my side hustle, I, I do formatting. So if anyone yes. needs help with that, I don't have any slots left in in May, but in the summer, hit me up sooner than later. And um, yep. yeah, I'm excited because I'm I'm going to get a date, win a date with Duncan Winterfell. She's obsessed with one of the side characters. Just telling you all, you'll you'll hear a little bit more about Duncan tonight. Um, <laughs> But if this is the first time here, I am author D.L. Tillery, and I tend to dibble and dabble in different genres, hence why I'm called the mistress of horror, because I'm married to all the other genres, but I am the mistress of horror, meaning you will get something dark and or horror-esque, even in my non-dark and horror things, such as I do write romance, I do write sci-fi, I do write with horror horror <laughs> so i write a lot of different other genres and also categories but this very specific book is dark fantasy that we'll be talking about tonight and with a love story in it i don't call it dark fantasy romance because the main point of the book is the dark fantasy however there is romance elements in the story as there are other elements as well which we will hear about coming up soon um so if you don't know much about me then of course there's always my website you can check out if you follow my youtube channel then you know that i do talk about horror things i do follow my writing journey on here and keeping it 100 about what i'm doing as an author so if that type of stuff interests you, then you can look no further and subscribe to the channel if you're new and then look out for new videos. You'll notice some poetry based things on here as well because I am a poet. So you'll see some of that, no secret. But 
So what we're going to do first, and we're about two, three minutes away from me pressing the launch button because it is tentatively 640 that I plan to launch it. I'm going to show you the pre-launch page real quick, which let me share the screen with you. La, la, la. Let's see. It is. I want to say. You girl, me and this light already arguing. Uh oh. All right, so my computer, my computer just dinged on me. So it is? I'll, I'll be back. Okay, you good. So this is the Kickstarter pre-launch page that anyone can see at the moment. Um, this is where you go well before, weeks and weeks in advance to follow the page, which is this button here. Currently, I have 14 people following the page. Not so bad, considering. So this is what you'll get if you follow the link that is in the description for now. But once I press the launch page, then you'll be able to view the actual Kickstarter itself, which I'm excited for everyone to see because of the cool tiers and everything. I'm just <laughs> excited, excited for that because of all the work that went into doing all this stuff with this. So anyway, this is the pre-launch page. So soon we will see the actual Kickstarter page up and ready to go. Okay, so tonight we are going to actually do some scene reads, which is only like two scenes that I'm going to do a little bit later. And I am going to do, there's a survival game that anyone can play, and that is linked below. Um... So anytime you want to, you can actually go do the survival game and I will read your answers live for you if you're going to be here at the live stream or you can get them in an email to you. So if you don't come to the live stream and or stay for the live stream for me to do the portion where I read your answers of your survival, how you survive in the world of Caliastro, then you will get them in an email. So. Hi, thank you. Now let's say hi to everyone in the chat before I press that launch button for the Kickstarter. Hi, Dante. Hi, Dreamy Truth author. Happy that you're here. I forgot you were saying yay. Hi, Ed, one of my favorite people, and Emma. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, also make friends with that like button so that we others can find this later. Okay, so um, give me one second so I can pull up the Kickstarter. One second, bear with me. I'm just trying to get this link. So. All right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to press the launch button. I have to share the screen with you. So presentation, share screen. And I'm going to go to the Kickstarter page. All right, so this is the live page for me to, to launch. And I'm going to go ahead and press it live. So hopefully there are any hiccups. <laughs> That's funny. You'll see it live, that's for sure. Here we go. Drum roll, they say. And it is live. Okay. Not scary. It's not scary. <laughs> it won't bite. So this is the page. Congratulations, your project is live. Now spread the word. Listen, I've been spreading the word, okay? Everywhere. All right, so now I'm going to leave this page and I'm going to go 
to the actual link that you would all be using, which is actually below. Let me share the screen again, but this time go to the Get Started page. Rebel. Not that anymore. Let's reload that. And here it is. So, this is what you'll see if you follow the link below. And it says here, Kali Alpha Joe Live Virgin by DL Tillery. Dark fantasy with love story elements, a tale laced in mystery and dark secrets. Werewolves, vampires, and more under two realms. So, our goal is $560. It's not a very large goal, but it is what is required for the basis. And then I have 29 days to go. And then this is where you would back the project there, or you would just scroll down. It has a little bit about me here. And this is where we get into the story of the Kickstarter. So um, let me go back to the chat so I can actually see it here. Yay, thanks. Easy so you got the notification for going live. And yeah, so this is what it looks like. And this is the story part. They call it the story so that way you can find out about what's what the whole thing that I'm raising, you know, funds for. And here it says, um, he is weighed down by obligations. She has no recollection of who she is. When two worlds intermingle and secrets are around every corner, will their connection survive? So giving you a little dum 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 feel there. And then you can see the two characters. This is Kaliastro, it's Allison. And then the story. So why would you love Cagliostro? If you like gothic undertones, vampire hunters, drama and plots with mixed species, mid burn, and cosmic horror undertones, then this is the book for you. So it gives like a little, this is the little thing to let you know kind of within the book. And we have werewolves, billionaire CEO, because Cagliostro himself is, powerful protagonist. Yes, yes, he is. Magic vampires, he fell first. Hmm. <laughs> Fallen angels, which are called Lash, um, Lashi in my book, and interspecies romance is involved in this story. Um, and then I have about the book. So then you would read the section about the book, which is closer to like a blur type of se section. Um, and then we have the audience. Now, if you haven't heard anything about the book, I could read this to you. Give me one second. I'm sending off the messages to the people that are not online who would be interested possibly in my book that have read some of my other stuff. So I'm doing all this stuff live. So hopefully some of those people would be interested in helping the um, Kickstarter of Kali Astro, which would be really cool. So anyway, I sent it all to all those people. That's taken care of. Now, let's read a little bit about Caliostro as far as like the blurb would go. In a world shrouded in mystery and silence where darkness weaves its intricate web, Caliostro Masterson walks a path unlike any other. Enduring for over seven centuries, he remains haunted by the enigma of his own past. Resigned to his solitude, he transverses both mortal and veiled realms until a desperate cry pierced the stillness of, of dusk, drawing him to the edge of a nearby lake. There he finds a woman on the, break of, on the brink of oblivion, her heartbeat fading into the night. Unable to resist the pull of compassion, Aliastro leaps into action, saving her from the watery abyss. But as she awakens, she is a blank slate, devoid of memories or identity. With each passing moment, the bond between them deepens. For Hmm, pardon me. Fraught with danger and desire, yet Caliastro's ancient obligations loom large, threatening to unravel the fragile threads of their connection. A relentless attacks, as relentless attacks from the Haunter's Guild escalate, Caliastro finds himself torn between duty and love. Haunted by shadows of his past, he must navigate treacherous waters, safeguarding his newfound companion from the perils of his world and the... Hmm, tumult of his own heart. 
for she is an outsider, stranger to his realm and his affections. And yet in her, he glimpses the possibility of redemption. As they journey together through the labyrinth of fate, Kaleastro must confront the truths that lie dormant within him. At least they consume them both in their relentless pursuit of salvation. So that is the blurb. Um, and that is the section on there. You can actually read it on the Kickstarter. And then you have the audience. And this pretty much tells you what audience this book is pointed towards. Um, Kali Astral Tale Libertin is an adult fiction novel within the dark fantasy genre intended for readers age 18 and above. In its first installment, the book hints at the multi-layered elements woven into the narrative. Among these elements are cosmic horror, romance, and gothic themes. So if you're interested, that would be for you. And then there's a little bit about me, which can be found on my website. Like I said, if you've been here before, you know about me. And this is my team, because my editor for Polly Astro's book, Formatter, Elysium Formatting, which uh, um, Aphrodite runs that. And then Dusan Markovic, who is the cover artist of this cover here. He's amazing. Freaking amazing. Um, and then my character artist, who did this art here. And actually part of the rewards that... Yeah. <laughs> Let me check the chat too. I'm glad you got the email. You need that. That's right. My only good to hear. I'm not glad when people are interested in the book. Um. So, and then why Kickstarter section? And you could click any of these sections on the side, and it will take you directly to them to make it easy for everyone. So, so this is pretty much just explains why I would use Kickstarter and how it's helpful. Um, and bringing out books as an indie author can be difficult, both straining you on funds and straining you just mentally, because you have to wear a lot of hats when you're an indie author. So um, I'm trying to use Kickstarter to help boost the book releasing and help it come out. And of course, this helps the audience give a good head start of the people who will be interested. So Kickstarter was a great choice, in my opinion. Um, and this is a time release exclusive for Kickstarter. That's I should be mentioning that. If this is funded, the novel tiers will have between a three and four month time exclusive from the time fulfillment begins to the public pre-order of the book. As a backer, you get to read the dark fantasy tale before anyone else. And so this is the funding section um, and how funding will be used. Here's the general breakdown of how funding funds will be spent. If the goal is met and or we are able to reach any stretch goals, funds will go to these areas. So I have a little breakdown of marketing here, shipping, rewards, fees, and then printing. So yeah, that's all dallied up and that's how that goes. And then we have the reward tiers, which show here, but they're also on this side for when you are picking them. And for everyone else, it wouldn't be darkened out since I'm the one on the page. It would be darkened out for me because I can't bless you myself. Um, so the reward tiers are, it start off with the digital stuff first. Now the digital rewards, let me double check and make sure I didn't miss anybody. Hi, Barrett. Thanks for popping in. Happy to have you. So the Kickstarter is live. So anyone who wants to back it from the start are welcome to. I know a lot of people do countdowns <laughs> when they first obviously open it up. But, you know, I like to be surprised. So I'm not going to do a countdown. If you like if you get funded in like an hour or some crazy stuff. That's, that's always fun to watch when that happens for people. And so, so much applause to them. Um, but the first reward that's up here is actually tie-ins to Kaleastro's world. For those who have read The Room Within Fractals, 
they may or may not know, and you will learn today, that the room within and fractals both are laced into Kaleastro's world. So these are pretty good starters for people who have not read any of my stuff before. Um, and so this tier is a $5 tier. So every budget could help back this Kickstarter. And you would get a ebook copy of The Room Within, an ebook copy of Fractals, and the digital bookmarks. These are just collectibles for you to keep on your computer because you like the stories. So they're bookmarks, but they are you can print them later if you would like. So they're printable, and they are in a bookmark shaped form when you get the PDF of them. Um, but I think even as book collectors, why not have a digital bookmark? Because we may be, a lot of us are ebook readers, but that don't mean we don't like bookmarks anymore. So I decided to give those and include it with those two books. They are short stories, and um, but they kind of introduce you to the world of Cagliostro from different perspectives. So the characters that are the leads are not like Cagliostro himself. Um, the Room Within is uh, from a mortal's perspective. And then Fractals is someone who is more told that maybe not later. Um, so anyway, that's how we start off with the rewards. And then we go into the next reward, which is Veiled Winter Wolf Companion Novella. This is a novella, which the cover is actually changing because I do make my own covers besides the main covers for Kaleosho series anyway. Um but this is a companion novel, novella, so pretty nice size. It's not a full-size novel, but it is a novella size. And that one is exclusive as well as with Cagliostro for this Kickstarter. It's a side story of Winter Wolf, Duncan Winter Wolf, who is one of the main prominent side characters in Cagliostro's three-book series. So it's kind of a cool way to get in his head because you don't get to get so deep in his head during the first book. So I thought that this was cool to offer this to um, some of the backers. And this is a $10 tier where you just get the ebook of this and the virtual, um, the digital bookmark. Um, and then the third tier is the first one into getting the ebook of Cagliostro with the, digi um, the digital bookmark. And then it goes down and get all four of the ebooks for $25. And you get the Room Within Fractals, Winter Wolf Companion Novel, and the Cagliostro ebook. And then we start going into the bigger digital tier, which this one comes with the ebook, the digital bookmark set, which is the character bookmarks of Cagliostro, Allison, Duncan, and Delada. Their character art isn't created yet because that actually is one of the stretch goals. But the bookmarks will probably be done either way since they are in these tiers. Um, and then the theme of the book bookmark. And then the digital map of the Moors of the Veil, vale, which is on the, uh, um, the Veil vale side realm. So you get to see that map, which gives you a kind of like a view of where Cagliostro's manor is in the book and then the, one of the cities in the Vale world and a few other things in the main beginning of the story where the lake is located. So that kind of gives you an idea. And then you have the character art for Cagliostro and Allison Digital and then the album. Because Cagliostro has a, an official album that was created a couple years ago by a good friend of mine, Tribal Snake. Um, he's located in Japan. He is a very great composer. So he did a six track mini album for Cagliostro, which I, he's so good. So actually this album, this album comes with it. All proceedings for the albums go directly to Tribal Snake because I believe in supporting each other as artists. And um, so that's included in the first big package, the Beyond the Veil Grand Digital Package tier. And that one's a $30 tier. So that one, you get a pretty good amount of stuff all digital, though, so you don't have to worry about any shipping. And then the printed tiers start here. Now let's take a little break and make sure I miss anyone in the chat or anyone backstage. Cool. Anyway, I'm going to keep going and telling you all about this. 
and then I will refresh and check the Kickstarter. All right. Go back to this. All right. So the printed rewards. We have um, the forty dollar tier. So then we have the forty dollar tier here, where um, the paperback with the bookmark, and that's a physical. It's all physical prints now. This portion, and then we have the card back to follow with the character bookmarks. Then we have the fifty dollar tier that comes with the signed edition of the paperback, the themed book bookmark the character art for the two characters in the album and then he, next we have and these all come the physical tiers all come with the ebook version of Kali because again some readers like to go back and forwards like if they're reading home they can read their book and if they're out and about they can read the ebook or if they're home and they don't feel like grabbing the book they can just pull out their phone and read the book so with each printed um tier you get the ebook version with it so and then the $60 tier is the hardback, the character art, the bookmarks of the characters, and then the album. And this is a signed edition. Then you have the bigger, bigger, some of the bigger packages. So you have the $85 to be a vampire tier. This comes with a bunch of stuff. But this one's based off of Delata, who, if you read the room within, you know it's a type of vampire. And she is one of the side characters in the story. And this one is in homage to her one of the side villains. You get Delada's Blood Journal. You get the Dark Beauty, one of the Dark Beauty adult coloring books. Two stickers, random vampire as stickers. The Room Within, because that was Delada's debut. And then the hardback signed edition with the vampire blood tear candles. Beware of vampire sign. <laughs> and the Delada bookmark. And then the biggest package for the big fans of this is the Kali Astro Book One book. I want it all signed edition package. You get the Kali Astro couples mug, which is both two sided. It's Kali Astro and Allison. Then you get the special Kali Astro stickers, which is his wings, because he obviously has wings, his sword, and the necklace he always wears. It's a nice emblem of that may or may not make appearance in the book as a header. And then the hardback signed edition, the ebook is included in this. The bag, this is like a book box. You get the character art for Kali Alpha Allison, the printed map, the album, and you get all of the other books, the um, companion novel for Winter Wolf, even my Thorns of My Heart Dark Romance poetry collection is thrown in the fractals and a copy of the room within and then all of the bookmarks and prints. So this is the big package for those who are interested. And then we have the stretch goals section. And this is released as if we reach these, if it goes past the goal that we're trying to reach. Um, and then the shipping. And shipping is important. Now that is very important because a lot of people miss this section, believe it or not. The shipping is important because it depends on where you are, if you can get the printed um, physical tears, or if you do want it but printed, but you're not, your place of residence isn't listed, then you can always message me and then I can add that. And then you can decide if you want to proceed. The shipping is different everywhere. Now, I'm going to read this section because it's very important for anyone here who will end up backing the Kickstarter or pass the word along. Um, how shipping works. All digital reward tiers are sent out worldwide and will be sent out between six to eight weeks after the campaign ends. As for the physical reward tiers, the shipping destination offerings are as follows. United States, Canada, and United Kingdom. Keep in mind that shipping is calculated after you've chosen your reward tier 
and add-ons here on Kickstarter. Shipping is not included in the pledge. I have to make sure I stress that to people because everyone will think that that it is. Now, anyone who pledges anything, they do not take any money until this is funded. Because it has to be funded. It's all or nothing. You either get funded or you get nothing. So no one's money is taken before that. So they want to do like refund situation. So after it's funded, then that's when you're charged for the pledge of the tier you pick, but it is not shipping of any printed tiers. So if you pick a physical tier, you would get a survey from me and then that would include, you know, your shipping, how much your shipping would be, because then I would, I would after I get your address and I can tell about where what's that that's going to be. And Aphrodite is that. <laughs> He's at money, eh? <laughs> you funny, Richard. <laughs> Thanks for popping in. Oh, uh, thank you, Bart. I'm so mad, but I know you can't help computer stuff. Listen, I know. <laughs> it's dark. I missed everything. I missed the lunch. You're so funny. Not really. I'm in, I pledge before I came back. You too funny. I can't. But yeah, so so can you uh, see pledges? Can I see what? Can you see pledges? I uh, probably once I refresh. <laughs> once I refresh, more than likely I could. But when I'm on here, I'm just I'm about at the end of it, trying to explain to everybody about the shipping. I did explain the most important part that your shipping cost is not included in the pledge, and that will be after you get the survey from me at the end of it if it is funded. So if you pledge again, money is not taken right now. It's not taken until I get funded if we do. So you there's nothing to stress right now. And the campaign is on until May 12th. So you have plenty of time. Um, if you want to support the campaign, but your country of residence isn't listed, message me for a shipping quote to see if you'd like to proceed. Um, again, shipping is not included in the pledge and will be handled separately. You will receive a survey after the Kickstarter ends to select shipping options and make payments for shipping. Again, this is a separate fee that is not collected with your pledge from Kickstarter. It's stressed so many times if people really don't pay attention to that. Now, for physical reward tier fulfillment, it takes Kickstarter about a week to process your orders or more, then two more weeks to send the funds to me or more. <laughs> That's what I hear. Um, once the funds, I receive the funds, I can order the goodies and have some design. Then they need to get to me, which will take more weeks. Once I receive everything, I will package and ship everything out. During this process, I will be keeping everyone up to date um, and one progress each week because I like to be transparent. Risk and challenges, there aren't really any risks with this. I don't anticipate any. Um, as I've published in the past, it's not something new to me. Um, also, the book is written and professionally edited already. All artwork shown is created, so it's not like I'm waiting on the things that I'm showing here. Um, any challenges that may arise will likely revolve around printing and shipping timelines, which can happen. However, I'm committed to doing my best to meet the scheduled dates. I will keep everyone informed. So, Right now, the digital tiers plan to be put out around July, and then the physical printed tiers will be September at the latest. So I have to, I'm going to try to get them out August, but I can't say for sure. So September is the deadline for me to get the physical printed tiers out. I will be updating everyone constantly as things arise and I have info to give. I won't over bother you, but I will definitely letting you know when things are updated. I like to keep people informed. So anyway, that is the Kickstarter. So I'm going to stop sharing for now. And But don't forget, like, and I'm sorry about my background. I'm still unpacking because I finally have a, a place um, in the darkness because the light is upstairs. Um, you want to back as soon as possible so she can get one of those little cute little buttons and Kickstarter can promote. Yes. So what is it, like within an hour, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, they have different ones. But um, yes. Yeah. Yes. We, want it as soon as, we want it as soon as possible. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> oh, so like, that's a lot. You, you know think I mean? it was my Kickstarter. Oh, and I can't type right now because I had to unplug my keyboard in order to plug up the other mic. Because life, yeah, I know life. You can't stop um, that. I'll figure out something later. 
and maybe actually get a light so you guys can see me. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, three backers already. I guess I should share that. Show now. Hold on a yes, yes, yes. All right. I couldn't oh, even change this. Okay. I'm a Martian. <laughs> I'm a Martian. <laughs> Boom, shaka, laka. <laughs> Let's go to the what page of that. I think it's this one. I don't know if it's this one. Oh, I hate the camera being so far away. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. So, we're almost halfway to the goal. <laughs> right now, we're at 215 with three baggers. So, I'm not mad. <laughs> 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 and thank you everyone who has pledged. That is awesome. If you're here, I know Ed did, and I know that I think I saw Barrett did. Thank you, and Aphrodite. Thank you for for being on here pledging. So it's a, that's really cool. I'm just happy with that. I know, so, like halfway there already. <laughs> right? That's great. So I'm like, I, I love your campaign, though. I, like. It took I can't a lot. wait for you to do a video on it because... Oh, my goodness. And I am. I am so doing a video because everyone needs to know all the things. And, <laughs> you know, I am very much into, you know, trying to get everyone yeah. as much info because if I... Even though there's so many videos about Kickstarter out here, it's still, like, there's some little teeny tiny details that could be so detriment to you... It's that you're like pulling your hair out, but it's not something that seems that big a deal to somebody else, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I try to like I want to hit all the points and talk about like the steps before you even like type in Kickstarter, you know what I'm saying? Because it's so many things that you need to prepare before you even do it. Like I just hate that, you know. I <laughs> right, started, I really was. <laughs> I started my channel for the sole purpose of being the person I needed, you know, right, because no one right. helped me and I didn't know what I was doing. The only thing I knew how to do was write yeah. and I didn't know anything. And so everything was like trial by fire. And then I noticed when I was researching um, Kickstarter and stuff, it's like, it's a lot of gatekeeping. Like, come on, people, you figured yeah, it out. Can't you share? It doesn't hurt to share. <laughs> No, it doesn't it really hurt doesn't. your campaign. Like I don't, I don't understand that that way of yeah. thinking. I don't either. I'm just like I don't know. And then not even like I'll blatantly ask people questions like, um, "Yeah, what company did you use to do your foils?" And yeah, like, oh, or your sprayed my, edges or something. My, my cousin helped me out with that. Like, okay, I don't, I don't get that. Yeah, I just I want to be transparent about it, and I want to tell people as much as possible, <laughs> like all the things. Even like I was listen, I was I was losing my mind <laughs> when I was like, okay, well, but first you have to go make all the things, like all the stuff in my Kickstarter. I had to make all that. Well, of course, I made this with my art that I had, and then I made this. This is a picture. Like these words with the wings are a picture that I made. And then this is a picture from pictures put together. <laughs> and then this also, I made all these with Canva. So they give you just the one blank page and it says like these, there's not much, not much. I even had to learn how to do this, like the heading because they had it there. But if you don't know, exactly what button to press to activate the heading, let's say, but then, you know, like you don't know, you just don't. And you may get frustrated because you already done spent so much time making so many other things that you're kind of like, why isn't this working? And it's something very simple. So when I do my Kickstarter, like how to build your Kickstarter, when I'm doing like, another, I'm going to, I'm going to really show everyone just the way that I did it and got it all together. And then the programs I used to build all the other things that I did. So, yeah, it's it's a lot. But oh, at the end of it, it's still rewarding because you did do all that stuff, you know. So I am very excited to have done it and got it launched. Now we just have to wait 
<laughs> and see like if you get to the goal that's the thing too and if we go past the goal i would be i don't know i probably do a freak out videos i probably would freak out like i'm not going well <laughs> i probably would freak out so um let's talk about the survival game so the survival game is linked in the description for anyone who wants to play um <laughs> Now, the survival game is just on a Google form, and you answer the questions as they are given to you. And I will pull up that. Let me switch off to a different screen. So let me pull up the survival game for you, because of course we're going to have some fun here tonight. We'll talk about that the whole time. So, the survival game. Let me share it. So, here is the Kali Astral survival game. So we're going to play a question game. Each answer will have a different outcome. Think carefully. On this form, you'll just put in your email. This is so that I can send you your answers if you aren't here at the live stream, like if you're watching this on replay and you want to play still, I'm going to keep it up. And then I will email you your replies so you'll know what your outcome for each answer that you give for each question. And it's multiple choice. You have three choices. Some of these I already know what Aphrodite's answer is going to be. I was just laughing at myself while reading this because I knew she was going to say some of these. Then it asks you your first and last name, just for reference, so I can know who I'm addressing um, when I send you your answers. And then it has a welcome to Kaleosho's world. And then we go into the questions. So just to give you an idea of the first question. You wake up in the middle of a dense forest. You hear growling and rustling nearby. What's the first? What's your first instinct? And you have a multiple choice of A, hide and observe the surroundings. B, investigate the source of the noise. And C, climb a tree to get a better view. So you have to pick and then you go through 12 questions. And then at the bottom we have like, I have this little thing telling you how you get your answers. And then about the live stream and then the Kickstarter. And then you can file the Kickstarter from there, actually. And then you also have the submit button. Because if you click the Kickstarter link, it will open a separate window. And then you can still submit your answers for me to check. And I can give you what your outcome was for each one of those scenarios. So anyway, if you're up for a game, by all means, let's play. So again, the link to the game is in the description section. It is the second link, I believe, below the Kickstarter link. And if you want to play, let's play. If you do do it while we're live, which doesn't take you very long, as long as you're not an overthinker, um, <laughs> then I will actually read you your, your if you survive certain ones, if something funny happens, silly happens, or you didn't make it happen. Um <laughs> So, and I don't know the outcomes. I did not read them. I had the answers auto-generated based to your answer. So, I wanted to be surprised yeah. about your outcome. Huh? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. I've been talking this whole time. Girl, you funny. <laughs> the birds are like, she talking to us? <laughs> Micro. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Okay, but and I'm here. He was saying back hi to you. Hi. I was trying to type, then I couldn't type. So I was like, I finally got into type, and then I couldn't talk. <laughs> and then she had it muted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dahlia. Yes, Lee. it has been way too long. I know, right? Don't make me cry. <laughs> You're not late. You're not late, girl. Happy Friday. You're not right, late. I That's why I told anyone out. they can pop in anytime they want to. So no pressure here. The Kickstarter link for anyone who wants to back the Kickstarter or just read about it or share it with those who be interested in dark fantasy with all those elements. Yeah, I can still hear you. Yes. Okay. Still good. Um, then you can click the link below. It's the first link in the description for the Kickstarter. And below that survival game if you want to test your might. So <laughs> some will eat me is what you're trying to say. That's how it's possible. I'm not going to say no. There's definitely one of the questions I was laughing out loud. Uh, I know what you're going to say. If any of these run for my life, I just like. You'll just say that. 
right? You just go pick that. Well, that is actually an option. Obviously, I did I did a lot of auto generate for this one because I figured I'd be too biased if I wrote these <laughs> questions because I wouldn't be trying to help anybody live. No, I would. <laughs> That's not my thing. So <laughs> I was like, let me do an auto generate, put all the information in, and let it auto generate the questions and the the outcomes because if I pick the outcome gonna be bad always probably especially if you chose to come up in this world or you got pushed into this world bad stuff <laughs> gonna happen so I let I let it auto generate that so some of you could get lucky depends on what you pick I don't know I want to be surprised I want to be surprised by the outcome as well oh ED say play the game okay then let me go to the responses and I will let you know your outcomes, Ed. So you are the first. I, I have, but I have a question about why the hell I'm waking up in the middle of a dense forest. Um, <laughs> that's a good question, but I guess it's one you could add. Uh, Remember what's going on? All right, see, so let, let's go. <laughs> this is too funny. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute, but I am going to read Ed Lewis's answers. And then let you know the outcome for each one. So let me pull up my outcome list as well. I'm gonna put that here so I can answer each one of yours for you. See what you pick. Okay, <laughs> so let me where that go. There we go. All right, so Edie, you chose for number one. Hi. Now, this is you wake up in the middle of a dense forest. You hear growling and rustling nearby. What's your first instinct? To um, and Ed said to hide and observe the surroundings. I think that's a smart move. So your outcome, Ed, is you remain hidden and observe the surroundings carefully. You spot a group of hostile vampires. Passing by without noticing you, allowing you to evade danger and continue your journey safely. So you're safe, Edie, for now. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to the second question. While exploring, you encounter a wounded Lycrin. What do you do? I, mm, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. My answer not a no. Actually, you know what? I did read your first response, Edie, but I'm going to wait because then it's going to give everyone else a chance to pick the one so they can survive. And we can't have that. So well, I'm I, going to... I ain't resting in no river. <laughs> Ever. For no reason. So I'm going, to, I'm going to wait just a little bit and see if anyone else wants to play the game. And as I get the responses, I'll wait until 7.30. Oh. Oh, bird play too. Okay. So I'm going to wait 10 minutes and then I'm going to close reading them live. Okay. So if you want to play now and let me to read your survival rate live, then you can take it within the next 10 minutes and I will do them in order in which I receive them. So ED, you are still first, but you're, you're off to a good start. You survived the first one. <laughs> Ain't no such thing as a friendly pixie. Well, at least none. Probably Cali Apple's <laughs> <laughs> Look, 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 look at Barry said. Same question as Aphrodite. Why am I in the scary force? <laughs> <laughs> Many of reasons. Many of reasons. There could be plenty of reasons why you would be. You could be, you could be a supernatural. I mean. I knew that you, goddamn Daggeroo was coming. I <laughs> knew I felt it in my bones. She got to that question. Oh. Ugh. She got to the question. Now, if you read the book, you know what the Daggeroo worm is. I knew. They are pretty grimy and disgusting. Not going to lie. Mm, my hands are still ain't up here. <laughs> <laughs> I know Aphrodite fun. She said, not the dagger. She funny. I can't with her. <laughs> and the birds are like, I am far too risk <laughs> averse to get out of out a broken down vehicle if it broke down. <laughs> this is true. Hold on one second for me. <laughs> Why Aphrodite's doing this stuff?
Oh, hold up now. I might do that. Mm-mm-mm. And I'm back. All right. Let's see, Barry said. Let's be real. My people are in the top three to be killed off in Siri stuff. Well. All right. I did it. I finished it. I'm you sorry it took me so long. It's hard for me to see. You <laughs> All right. So still have another seven minutes if anyone else wants to give it a go so I can read your answers live. Anyone else that doesn't want a replay of this or later, then I will be emailing you your responses as I receive them. So look forward to that. It's just a fun little game you can play, learn a little bit about Kali Ashra's world and possibilities. <laughs> ben, and um <laughs> your people and mine. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. We don't last in these kind of scenarios. <laughs> nope, this is true. No last effect. Uh I gotta go find a light. Okie dokie. I mean you fine if you don't wanna get a light. Like you have, because I know the light bothers you when it's beating on you too long. Yeah, but I look, I look crazy. <laughs> I look like I'm sitting but, in shadows. So yeah, you know, he's like, we all know the gays get killed off <laughs> for right. a second act. You funny? I can't. Well, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. I was watching <laughs> a trailer for. Nah, um, he's out of the way for triple A. I'm trying to think of what the um. Look, you know, I know that's the right, Aphrodite. I know it was a Vince Vaughn movie. And it was a Vince Vaughn scary movie. And it was, I watched the trailer for it. And you have the black girl and the, the gay guy best friend. And yes. then you have the white girl. Yes. And the monster was like coming after him. And the guy grabbed the girl and said, you know we're going to die first. <laughs> and he took off running and grabbed the girl. I was like, he's right though. He said, who are they going to kill? The only other category left is virgin. And then they were like, and then they just booked. It was so, <laughs> it was so funny. No lies. I was like, yeah, you know we been killing us. Oh my goodness. I cannot. <laughs> what was that movie? It was pretty good. Oh, I can't remember the name. Look, like, look, remember the name for you. I, I have to. <laughs> look, he said, we, we die. Yeah, we die. <laughs> oh well, if they're after virgins, I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> we all safe. We all safe. I'm Is not that safe. The case? Uh, okay. I just turned 27 um Tuesday, okay, and I yes, celebrated again. peacefully <laughs> and sweet and innocently, as I always do. <laughs> Yeah, okay, girl. He said, what's a scary movie? It was a scary movie, but... Was it a scary movie, though, Aphrodite? It might have been a... No, 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 been it was. I swear it was. Hold on. Mm, it sounded a little funny, though. You just probably thought it was scary, even though it was funny. Like, it was a... If it's a funny, scary movie, that I let really my sad. child... I let my, I let my daughter talk me into watching it after we saw the trailer, because the trailer looked funny. Well, sometimes the horror movies that are still funny are still have scary stuff in them, but they have more funny parts. So someone like you that might freaky. not matter. It was freaky. It's called Freaky. It was like a oh, play freaky. freaky product. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know Freaky. Freaky, but it was good. I, I'll give it to you. Because <laughs> I'm like, no, fight. <laughs> we not playing. <laughs> yeah. I feel it like it might have been a scary movie <laughs> from that. The birth that I turned scary. 30 it, once it a was, year. It was absolutely what do you call it? Um slasher movie when you know chasing down the, t- the kids and killing the movie. Yeah, the usual. Bird said I can handle funny horror movies. I, I can handle you. slasher. I don't like them, but I can handle them because it just makes me think of monster movies and I like monsters. So you know, yes. give me my werewolves and vampires and stuff. I do not do ghosts and deep shut up. Ghost demons, stuff like that. <laughs> My bird called me a, 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 a basically a punk. Mm-mm, the birds that I already know what goes on. I see it every day. Yeah, I know, right? We should do like a a watch party or something. Watch freaky. 
That'd probably be fun. Freaking, it was good. I have to give it to them. It was good because they weren't super stupid. Like, oh my God, let's rush back into the house kind of movie. Like, no. Oh, <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the it kind of scary movie I don't like. But no, it, no. <laughs> Aphrodite won't even look at that. No. I have no idea. Look at that. <laughs> I know those exist. The real now the remake of it was to me worse. Like the clown, he was worse. Like I do love Terry's version, I do. But like Sky's Guard version was definitely even more creepier. Like he would get up out of stuff that was little and he, you know, he giant. But he come up out of stuff. I'm like, nope. <laughs> that, that movie, nope. I need to look at that too. That was a large. See, that's exactly oh, black people say, nope, we're not doing he that. Did it. I, I'm mad with him because I wanted, I like to watch whatever he does. So he did an um, interview on one of the like, late night talk shows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the guy was like, yeah, Jimmy Fallon. He's like, oh, those special effects and how you did your eyes. And he no, said, he that was special eyes. effects. And then he goes, and he made yeah. his eyes do that. Yeah, he do like he does like the the he make his eyes go out and then like yeah. I broke up with him that minute. <laughs> I went right back to his brother. Now you know what? Then never mind. I'm going back with Al. We through. We through. <laughs> like no, we good. Very funny. <laughs> Bertha, um, we can't survive the it kind of monster. That's true. And then you have the remake mess with my soul. Yeah. <laughs> Because y'all, that was terrifying. Yep, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it was good. It was good. I, I, I enjoyed it immensely. And see, Bird not lying because I'm not going to try mess it up for anybody. But the, the the gay dude gets off quite early. At least, at least it, well, his boyfriend did. Oh, he just got kind of lucky, I guess. It was like mm, I'm full. Oh, I don't need no more. I, I I can't deal with the whole. ED has a right. Hey, sweetie. I'm glad you made it. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, now now I am mad. I need a light. I need a light. Everybody <laughs> in the brightness. I, I look like I'm hot in the dark. <laughs> it's very fitting because, you know, I do do uh, dark stuff. <laughs> I tried to light up tonight a little bit, but, you know. <laughs> I'm going to go try to find a light. I'll be right back. All right, sweetie. So, Ed, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, yeah, I never know how to do these, but I'll I'll give it a go. Give it a go. Um, I'm Ed. I'm the host of Ed Lewis Reviews, and I have no he, idea what to say. He does all the things over there on his channel. It's really cool. Like he does does awesome book reviews. I look forward to those poetry readings, which are really really good. So, yeah, and apparently an author, so you have some work style that people can read. But when I first found that out, I was like, what? I don't have any of those. So then I was, like, upset with myself. I have a few. Not very yeah, many. you dibble and dabble. I think the first thing I used I was reading was in the, the anthology. That I, feel mm -hmm. with that. I was like, what? My boy writing? Okay, watch out now. Let's go. Oh looky look looky look here. She want you want to do the game. The game is you got you you you, you got a couple minutes. Well, I had to read everybody's live. Um, the game is in the description. It is the Caliosto Survival Game. It's linked underneath the Kickstarter. And there you go. Awesome Barrett with the wrench. Like bam, here it is. So you click that link right there. Oh, she found it with her. Yeah, the survival game. So yeah, that's gonna be fun reading those. I have no idea what the outcome is, though. So I don't know who living, or who who's making it, but it's like they connected. It connected pretty well. And Ed, you were smart to pick that one. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think you'll find all my answers smart, though. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know what's gonna happen. We shall see. I will find out soon. I'll let Dahlia go ahead and take the. And take the game and then she will be the last one in and then we'll have four to read see what everyone did I'm, i can't wait like who's surviving in cali Astro's world nobody <laughs> we'll see just don't get the too bad we're running with the dag every worm those are those, it's still dark i can't do this light <laughs> don't do the light like don't we can see you just fine like so you don't need to 
No point in making more stuff. Sparkles. Like I know you got sparkles, so we can't see sparkles now without the light. So your sparkles will have to just. Can y'all see this? Tell us this there. I'm almost done. I'm so I know happy. you just that's moved this one, so that's pretty good. You know, my Ooh. mom is a like a like a move in like freak because like when we unpack the truck everything goes to the rooms that they're going to be unpacked in yep. we were done unpacking and like i want to say two days and we had an entire house like i can't it's crazy no it's crazy I, I did that and fortunately i mean the place is small but it's it's big it's way bigger than what i had and absolutely yeah, the space to use. So much nicer, so much. Hmm. It, you guys just don't know what it went Love through. it. Because then you get to decide what you want to do with all the things. I had, when the guys moved me, my studio guys moved me and my my son and then some of his employees. So I had like seven guys in here, what which you know was already them. hard on me. But uh, <laughs> seven guys <laughs> lifting and moving. They put everything in every room. Wow. So everything that's down here is what's left, that it belongs down here. Yep. So she kept she kept organized. She's the organized queen though, because like when she moved, there's like an itinerary, and like she yeah. has like <laughs> this is in each box on a clipboard. So it wasn't like if she like don't have to go check, she know which boxes they got the alphabets on them. <laughs> and then wow. so she I like can't you know, it. right? it's the she only right. thing I'm weird about. It's the only thing I'm weird about. <laughs> I was laughing, I, like, I have I to use that when I moved right it. Right on the outside of the boxes, and then, like, trying to get everything what's in them, I'm like, A. And then I yeah, have my A is. sheet, and it's A, the sheet tells me what's in it. Yeah, I was like, wow, I really need that. <laughs> you, need to, you need to sell that so people can just use it. Because <laughs> everyone really needs it. it. You definitely need it. I'll make, make a booklet that. and put it on my uh, coffee or something. Because it, it really does. It, a lifesaver. It really is. I, I listen. Let me check the chat real quick. Say, I know I died when I fought those vampires. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll see. Maybe you will. There like, wasn't no. Was I, there wasn't no option. Like you know, like make love to all the vampires and join them. We know you would have picked that one. <laughs> <laughs> we know that's the one you would have went with. Like it's a better way to die. <laughs> Like at least I'll go out happy. Like if that was your, that was your plan. <laughs> yeah, the glasses were great after that. I told you earlier, I love this. Um, Bertha, I'm moving to my option is always get away if you can get away. Yeah. You can't get away. Act like I legit had a nightmare that Freddy Krueger came to kill me, and I was a kid. Came to kill me. Only you. And I was everyone. so scared. I was like, you know what, Freddy. I feeling your feeling your pain. You right about killing them damn kids. I'm gonna help, you. With I'm gonna help with. you kill the rest of them kids. Just how don't dream me. like that. Like how you dream like that. You know something oh wrong with you. God. If you dream I was in like my that, bedroom, I knew my mind was like one room away, and I was like, I will help you kill all them kids. They suck. I will help you. <laughs> Just don't kill me. How Matt, do you do this in a dream? Like why? I don't like their the parents either. But Freddie was like, what? <laughs> Even Freddie and her dream was like, I was not dying that night. <laughs> I made you it out of the right. dream. Even her, even her in her dreams is extra to the point that she's like controlling it. And she's like, Freddie's like, what is wrong with you? What do you mean? Why are you going to be afraid? Like, you believe me at first. And then I had to get the courage. I'm like, bruh, I got you. And I went up my hug. Nah, come on, let's do this. Come on. <laughs> she went and hugged Freddie so she could live. Wow, my girl will do anything to make it out alive. I was not dying. Like, no, see, I don't. I wouldn't have cared if he was just going to slice me and kill me. But remember, like, he killed you in one. Of, like, he would have suffocated me the day or put me in a shark tank. True, because you were afraid of that. So. Yeah, he would have got You're me. Fair with, name. But I was scared of. I'm like, nah, I'm more scared of the shark than him. So, all right. Bertha, I friends with him. <laughs> Bertha, I moved to 22 and I still have a whole room not unpacked. Yeah. 
that's actually normal for most people. I'm just telling you. Like, it's not I'm almost that normal. done down here. It'll take me like another day or two. I got a whole, like, the, the place is a three bedroom. And so I have a whole bedroom that's going to be like a workshop. Well, I'm looking the wrong way at a workshop, and nothing in it is unpacked. Not one, hey, not one. Take your time, my friend. Thing. I can't I'm do that thing by myself. Bird said he's happy for you. I am so happy. All everybody here helped me. I would not be here if it wasn't for you all. We're glad that we were able to help. Yeah, I know it's a. I mean, yeah, you thought I was envisioning the other sky star brother. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't Alex. Um, it's Alex. Mm, mm. But, like, you know, <laughs> tasty. I mean, not that his brother isn't, I mean, he did. But, like, Alex is more tasty. Like, you know, if you had, like, cheesecake and strawberry <laughs> shortcake, both good. But you could be in mood for the cheesecake, depending on who you are. And you could be in mood for that one. So, I mean, it's depending on which flavor you into. At the time, because they both are amazingly I yummy, but I'm just had the worst crush on Alexander. Interesting analogy. <laughs> I know. I like to eat food for people. <laughs> but yes, and I like both of those cheesecake and strawberry shortcake because you can't really leave with either one of them. I've never had right? strawberry shortcake. It looks like. Girl, what? Oh, wow. How I've did you had... not. <laughs> now I'm going to have a little had, um, Strawberry jam on. Cheesecake. I'm mean, look. I might have to take back your mm. your best bitches bracelet. We both wearing that right now, but I might take it back. You talk about you and say strawberry. It never strawberry comes okay. I'm gonna have to bring your strawberry shortcake now because I don't know who you are. What you want? <laughs> wow. You not what happened? I've never had it. My cousin used to make everybody it in the chat right now. Let me know if you have never tasted <laughs> strawberry shortcake before in your life. Maybe it's because she's 27. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't been here that long. It just takes been here that long. He's 27 forever, so that must be why you haven't tasted. I'm just gonna say that's possible. It's possible. I don't know. I don't know. My, so, kids bought yes. me, my kids bought me a cake, and my, grand, my grandkids okay. were here too. <laughs> and so my grandson Julius, he goes, "How old are you, Oma?" And I said, "27." And he goes, "72." <laughs> and, and I'm like, "No, 27." He, he thought I was so old that I reversed it. And oh I said, Seven, do you really think I'm 72? He said, nah. I said, well, how old do you think I am? He said, I thought you were like 80. But <laughs> <laughs> he just went higher. Wow. So kids be cruel and straight up. Like they said, really he, he was dead serious. He was dead serious. Oh, oh, I, was like, oh, oh, usually. I, I know I look good, but damn. 80. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's mm. I'm yeah. 27. What happened to everybody in a couple minutes? Mm -hmm. Apparently, Bird was fighting vampires. I don't know what he was singing with that one. I don't know if I would say <laughs> that. Um, so, the scary movie, yep, it's a parody movie. It is. It's good, though. How many of y'all think the lean out diagram between Freddie K and Edward Scissorhands is a circle? What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I don't know. I'd have to see how many people think. <laughs> see, I yeah, haven't seen Edward yeah, Scissorhands see either. Now, I'm a Johnny Depp person. Wait, did you I, see? You didn't see Edward Scissorhands? I did. Oh, but here's the thing. That's Johnny's fault for doing the weird movie because he made me watch Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one. So you was like scared? Like, I don't like to look at this. There's a hand. So I broke my hands out of the area. I have a certain rule. Brendan Fraser... Jerry O'Connell, Johnny Depp. No matter what movie they make, I go see it. Yeah, okay. I broke yeah, that rule because of Johnny. The Johnny show. <laughs> it's not even scary. Mm. Not even a little bit. He, like he not has, even a little bit. He has scissor hands. So he no. do, but he like cut bushes and stuff and doing hairstyles. No. Everybody look at him. Then he went. Well, I mean, he could cut no. you up, but he he got trying to. Yeah, he <laughs> no. He's like, oops, my sister. I just rather not take that chance. <laughs> You know, it, it, she won't take chances, y'all. I'm just telling you. I'm sure. <laughs> and I went and I saw um scary movie. <laughs> well, three. It might be. The one with Jada Pinkett in it with the when she died in the movie theater. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because That's Jerry O'Connell was in it. Dream. And I was so mad. So I go to the theater. It was the first and only time 
I went to the theater by myself, which were already oh, done. Right? Probably wasn't about that. No one would go with me because <laughs> none of my friends watch scary movies. Wow, so really? Oh, you keep that type of circle. Huh? And the and the poor uh popcorn people, I don't the people who gave popcorn, they felt so bad for me that I was by myself that they came in to watch the movie with me. So they're like, hey, yeah. So why are you watching the movie? I'm like, yeah, um, Jerry O'Connell in it. I said, I have to watch, you know, because I like to see you That's know, the what reason he he hmm. And they were like, oh. I mean, what do you mean, oh? They're like, they said, mm. they you know, to warn you. When, he, when they came in with you, you should have been like, yeah, I should go. Yep. Yeah, I cried my eyes out too, and I was like, <laughs> "They were so nice. He's, fake. he's home. He's home. He's fine." But you knew they they were going in there because they were like, "Nobody should come watch this by themselves." Like that was what that was because not because always oh, said she by herself. Like, no, this is dangerous. Like, we're trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to help. You they out. Like scary so, like, movie three, all bets are off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go. And I'm very sad because 100 think there is a whole lot of overlap. I mean, technically, if, if Freddie wasn't like a murderer and a like you know a dream demon, technically, he could be an Edward Scissor Hands if he wasn't like perverted. Yeah, I mean, because of the whole situation, though, he kind of made that situation happen, Edward didn't. But you know, it's more like a stylization thing because you know, humans we tend to think up similar things, so it kind of can happen after a minute, which kind of looks that way. Yep, <laughs> yeah. And now he's like, Wait, she hasn't had sorry, she okay, right? Though, like, what's wrong? I, I never heard such craziness. Like, are we American if we haven't had sorry, she okay? Like, though, I'm gonna have to check yeah. that. <clears throat> you got a green card or something? A what? You have a green card or something we need to know about? <laughs> I <laughs> I can't say. I get in trouble at the airport every time right. I every time I try to get on the plane. See, after that, when you start talking, this is what happened to people. They say, wait. <laughs> then they say, what? Then they say the thing that you said that you didn't look at because obviously you're not looking at what's the thing you The horror movie is weird. But no, I... You know, you would think I really wasn't a citizen the way they treat me in the airports. <laughs> well, they, your name I have got felt up without dinner so many times. Well, your name is Aphrodite, so they were like, how's the God is here? No, and it's like, two, Lee, Aphrodite Lee. How is going to be with that? Because she's going to pull her over, clothes off, scan her. Let's make sure everything's kosher. We can't just let you go. Well, first they do. They get like they get like fifteen people and they scan my body with the majiggies, and then they're like, "We're going to have to go get a female and take you into a room." I say, "Why?" And they said, "Well, we need to act. You have to this take your clothes off." And I'm like, "You can do it. I'm just saying. I, all I'm asking for is a meal." I'm not. I'm, I'm not feeling. Now, feeling all right. Daddy's thinking this. She's like, <laughs> "This could be a time to maybe." This, Maybe I would find somebody attractive can undress me. But so they're always going like, oh, like the hot guy. Do this. I'm so sorry we gotta do this. I'm so sorry. See, like, see, I'm thinking do about it. comfortability. I forgot thinking about I can get a hot guy I can undress me. Where's the hot guy at? We don't need a I'm woman up in here. Out why they always flagging me? And I and I've even asked my What's mother. The name? Time, What's the name? What did you do in your past, Miss that oh, these well, people flagging possible. me every time I get on a plane? That's why I said your child is up to no good because we know you were. All right, everyone. Now it's time to find out who survived, who didn't, or maybe they all survived. We don't know. So now ED gets to go first because I did start with this question. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up. Oh, I can change my thing now. And then I'm going to pull up the outcome so I can read along with each one. So first we have ED. So. Let's see here. La la la. <laughs> Not go individual. I think I can. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say, like, why all found them all together? We don't need that. Anyway, so here's ED. <clears throat> and ED, we did write your first one. So you actually made a great choice on that because you're alive right now. Yay. So we're going to say that's a great choice. Now, question number two you chose A. And so your outcome is the Lycran appreciates because you've chose help the lycra and try to bandage his wounds aren't you nice <laughs> the lycra appreciates your kindness and offers to protect 
your offers protection in return. Oh, look at that. Ooh. You gain a valuable ally. Yeah, because not all Lycrans are bad in Kaliosha's world, which if you read the book, you will find out. So, good choice. Though. Look, look, he act like he going to write the book. He a professional right now. Okay. <laughs> I read that book and I still say what I say. <laughs> That's right. Why you said what you said. This sounds like thing. All right. So, question number three. As you venture deep into the forest, you stumble upon an ancient ruin. What's your next move? And the possibilities are, A, enter the ruin to search for valuable artifacts. B, stay outside and examine the runes from a distance. Or C, ignore the runes and continue exploring the forest. And um, ED picked B. So let's go see what B will get you. Do, 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 do. You are one of three. <laughs> okay. Be out here. Let's see. Okay, despite oh. Uh -oh. I don't know if this is the right one. Is this the right one? Um <clears throat> <laughs> that one. Actually, I think you're fine. Let's see what they have. Where, where, where? I think I think Edie gonna make it out with no issue. Edie probably no, will make it out. I'm dead <laughs> on question one. Know. I know. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. My birds over here being being naughty. Mm. We have company. Stop that. Who's just talking? Just chatty. They get it on. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You can't find it. I'm trying to see because it looks like this one. I'm not seeing one for B. Let me see. There should be, but I'm seeing like it goes to the vampires, and I'm sure that is question number. Four. So I think the third is just a pass through. So whatever you pick may just lead to the next question because it doesn't really have a doesn't really have like anything happens to the ruins and treasure. Yeah, because this one is well, there is another one with that one below it, but it's not. I'm just seeing that I think this might just be sort of a pass through. I'm gonna say because let me make sure that they put them in the wrong order. Mm-hmm. Am I skipping out or is that Aphrodite skipping out? Huh? Your, your internet's like, no. That's not me. Okay, that's C. That's you. But I'm not C. <laughs> I think that one's treasure. I just want to make sure that that's not another one because that one might be. Okay. I think that must be the only one. Is it? <clears throat> I'm just sure that it's different. Okay, so CB. I'm just not seeing that one. So I guess we're just going to say that one's just a pass through because the vampire one is the one that really has a, a bigger outcome if you live or die, it looks like. Well, let's see. Um, Barry might not be making his own good. Huh? <laughs> he, fought the, he fought the vampire, so that might not look good for anybody. Um, and so three, I'm going to say, of course, that one, you are fine because it's kind of like just choosing your destination. So it didn't really give any bad outcome for that one. So we're going to go ahead to four because ED picked stay outside and examine the runes from a distance. So Nothing much can happen bad, especially plus you have a, a ally right now, so I don't think many people mess with the Lycran. And if you fought the vampires, Edie, with your rock, you probably would have... <laughs> you, maybe you would have had not a bad time, because you have somebody looking out for you. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead to question number four. Suddenly, you encounter a group of hostile vampires. Yay! How do you handle the situation? <laughs> a, <is>. Yay. <laughs> try to A, try to negotiate with the vampires. That always turns out well. 
Uh, B, fight the vampires with whatever weapons you have. Or C, flee and hide until the vampires leave. Okay, so if you pick C, which ED did, because ED is smart, um, <laughs> we do not want to fight them. Well, in his case, you probably could have got away with it, but you didn't know the liker was going to be, hey, buddy, what's up? Yeah. No one could have guessed that when you thought for sure he probably want to eat you, but hey, <laughs> you did help him. Let's see. But then again, maybe the vampires might be okay, and then Barry to have an army of vampires. You never know with this. Let's see. So we want to come to three. Let's see. Okay. You manage to escape, but the vampires mark you as prey, making you a target for future encounters. Well, at least you're alive for now. So we can't, we can't completely rule it out. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think there was a good outcome for that one, no matter what. Like you, they were going because they vampires. Like if you tried to hide from them, how do you hide from a vampire? I mean, technically, they would smell you in some way or form. They're too yeah. late. You know what I'm saying? So the hiding would, you know, at least they only mark you because they could have just been like, "Bam, we we know where you are," and like ate you. That could have been nothing. <laughs> but they didn't pick that. That's why you know I didn't write these answers. It's auto generated because. I would have probably made them get you either way if you hit, like, hiding from a vampire. How is that? Work? <laughs> Unless you are not human, but you must not be really human. If you don't know my high C skills. My high C skills on point. Better than got, got you out of bad situations. That, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you find, this is question four. If you find mm -hmm. a hidden cave entrance, inside you discover a treasure chest guarded by Lashi Fallen. What's your strategy? A, attempt to reason with the Lache Fall and share the treasure, B, engage in combat with the Lache Fall and to claim the treasure, or C, leave the cave and explore other areas. So let's see. ED went with going A. We're going to look like going to some damn cave. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> you, can't, you can't see me in my living room. I go in the cage, I'll be like invisible. <laughs> no. I can't. Okay, so this is question five, I think, on this list. Let me see here, make sure. One, two, three, four, and we're on five, okay. All right, so let me go. You picked A, so let me go to A outcomes. Reasoning with the Lache Fallen. Surprisingly, the Lache Fallen agrees to share the treasure with you peacefully, allowing you to claim your share without bloodshed. He made it out yet again. Hey, no, this is my downfall. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up. ED. My man. You went in the cave. <laughs> Willingly. That's, the, that's called blonde roots. Because <laughs> I be damn. <laughs> I like how she played on that. Blonde roots. Girl, you funny. I can't. He's like, wow. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> Every part of me ran. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Bird. Bird's like, I'm not going in the dark cave unless someone has a phone charge. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> See, I'm just saying. <sighs> that was, I'm going to go back to the action. Tickling your brain like, oh, okay. Let's explore. <laughs> you might be. We'll see <laughs> when I get to you. You might be. I'll be waiting outside. For you, you might be okay. okay. I'm going to guard the entrance. You go in on. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a plan. Like, why, why not? <laughs> All right. So, sit. So, while resting near a river, you notice strange movements in the water. What do you do? A, investigate the riverbank cautiously, or B, ignore the movements and continue resting, or C, drink from the river without hesitation. What the hell? ED, I was, I was thinking, why would I drink from the river? <laughs> ED went with investigate the riverbank cautiously. So, let's see what the what? outcome for that one is. <laughs> How did your people so, survive? Investigate. <laughs> look, look. Can look. you breathe underwater? 
Everybody stays away from water. You shouldn't be near the water. <laughs> All right. So, um, investigating the whispers, you discover a hidden path leading to safety, avoiding potential danger lurking in the darkness. Hmm. So you still manage to be fine. So look at that. It's not bad. It's not bad. So he's still alive. So apparently making the right he's choice. He's rigged. He's rigged for the crazy people. <laughs> 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 oh well you better follow his lead then you know i'm just telling you um <laughs> all right so the next question night falls and you hear eerie oh this was for the eerie whispers coming mm. from the darkness how do you react well ed survived this one mm. so you stayed a failure and try to locate the source of the whispers and that's how you found your way out Let me see where I missed the yeah let me Where's see where i missed here? apparently a is the way yeah. out a is the way out. Ed's like loving his A. Like A is the way out. <laughs> I ain't ever been that curious. <laughs> if I'm hearing sounds and I don't see where the sounds coming from, they're not even getting acknowledged. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. It's too funny. Let me go back here. Uh, I think I missed the one because. Let me see. I'm trying to be weird. Is this the question is, did I survive the war? <laughs> yeah, did you survive the war? Let me. I mean, I'm resting by a riverbank right there. You know, that was a lot. Well, I mean, you know. I ain't going in no riverbank. You got alligators and stuff. <laughs> it could be anything in there. Anything. This is like, you know, Kaliosha's world, so they could be like. Dagger worms to be in the war. Oh, wait a minute. You talking about the river on the other side of the veil? <laughs> oh, hell no. See? Oh, no, no. He's got no, me nervous no, now. No, no. Oh, no. my goodness. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No. No, no. <laughs> she said, no, no. Whew. I got chill all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to know. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. You pick for the river bank, you pick A. Nice. So. You stay back and observe the strange movements in the water from a safe distance. You realize it's a group of friendly water sprites playing, and they gift you with a magical trinket as a token of their gratitude for not disturbing them. Yay. Now you have a, a nice magical trinket, which I don't know what it does. So y'all like, like, are all to be careful. Just kill me, question one. Don't even drag it out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even make me okay. suffer. I'm sorry, I can't. I got, I, I got to laugh at that. That's hilarious. Like, uh, oh my god. Let me go back to that other one because I think I just, I had it redo <clears> that <throat> one. I think it missed in a lot of. I just want to see what happened at the other one that. Oh, the chat. Well, likely with ED, nothing happened. Bad because we've been picking really good for this entire time. All right, let's see this one. Copy. Uh, let me go back down here. Do this one just to see. What happened? But nothing because he has a lycrim, lycrim with him. So the lycrim's friendly, so he's good anyway. Actually, because they like good fighters. So he get hungry. In my world, they they good <laughs> fighters, and he got much to worry about. He gonna get hungry. They they not like that. Now you got the ones who are hunters who work for the hunters guild. Now it depends on what the target is. Now if Ed <laughs> was a target, he would already did him in, but he apparently wasn't. So they usually are just like. To other people, like mortals, they are just normal until they turn into their werewolf form. I'm just trying to figure out how this predicament mm. to begin with. <laughs> well, you know, you end up in this type of world that could that could occur, like with these weird situations. I'm literally dying the first like ten minutes <laughs> of getting there. Book over chapter one. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> e and C for the chat one just to see what your outcome for those were. And you picked B on this one. Let's see. I don't know if something bad happened to you. Let's see. You decide this is for your one back where as you venture deeper into the woods, you stumble upon an ancient rune. rune. Um, what's mm -hmm. your next move? And you t B, stay outside and examine the runes um, from a distance with the Um you, do, 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 do. you decide to stay outside the runes and observe from a distance. While you don't discover any treasures, you avoid triggering any traps. Oh, look at that. Or encountering any lurking dangers within the runes. Your cautious approach ensures your safety, but you miss out on potential rewards. Oh, forget them rewards then. Nobody trying to Got traps and then stuff. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the one we were down here. I think we were at, we did the riverbank and then we were at the whispers, which you survived the whispers as well because good call on that one. <laughs> uh, we all think AED must have had like an art copy or something already. I didn't send those out or anything. <laughs> it seems like that's what he must have had. Um, all right, so the next question is you come across a group of friendly pixies offering shelter for the night. Do you accept their offer? And ED chose A, accept the pixie's offer and stay with them. Or you can pick B, decline the offer and continue your journey alone. <laughs> C, accept the offer but remain cautious around the pixie. All right, so let's go see. Oxy moron. <laughs> Friendly pixie. Ain't no such thing. All right, so A was ED's pick. The pixie, the pixies are delighted by your company and bestow upon you magical blessings that aid you in your journey. Yeah, <laughs> you should have smiled big because you haven't known it so far. How did I get so lucky on this? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> it's blonde ambition. <laughs> <laughs> I check it up to my uh, thirst for knowledge. And yeah, curious. right? It, it works we'll, we'll, we'll call it that then. <laughs> Too curious time. for your own good. <laughs> hey, well, it's working out for me. It is. Hey, it is. While yeah, you're in the cave, you encounter a dagger root worm. Mm. How do you deal with this dangerous creature? Now, this one. I didn't know how to answer this. Let, let's see. Attempt, attempt to communicate with the dagger root worm peacefully with ED's pit. B, attack the dagger root worm before it attacks you, or C, retreat from the cave and find another path. In my defense, I didn't know what it was. This is true. And so this clearly, is true. You did not clearly. have an art copy. Okay? Run, you did not run, have an art copy. Run. This is telling me you didn't have an art copy without telling me you didn't have an art copy. <laughs> <laughs> you you okay. can't reason with them things. <laughs> well, Again, this is generated. So, E.D. made a good choice again. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Communicating it with It is a worm. worm. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> raise <reason. laughs> it. And not only is negotiation. It's a worm three times bigger than you. <laughs> Through careful negotiation, you convince the dagger worm to let you pass unharmed, avoiding becoming its next victim. <laughs> He has the ass charisma. What can I say? And it was. Ain't no room where I'm passing up no tree. <laughs> Look, let me check the chat because I, where it's like, wait. <laughs> how? Like, how? I, to, I, I don't have to know what a dagger room worm is because the part that made me. <laughs> Look, it was worm. He, he was over here like, I'm like, God, speed. And why do I need to reason? With, why do I need to reason with a worm, right? So that automatically tell me it ain't something like this. <laughs> if I got a reason with it, because otherwise I just, you know, it's gonna be so it. awesome when Ed reads the future stories. Like, cause the Diary Worm is just really given a description in the first book at the beginning of the story. And then you don't really get to see the dagger in action in the first book again. But then when I release the collection of horror short stories that are based in Kyle Ashel's world later this year, and you read the very specific story in it as about the dagger worm. You're gonna be like, there's no way that I would have lived. It would not have been being nice to me. Now, granted, you could be a supernatural creature in this whole thing. 
Mm. I don't know if you're immortal or and supernatural. And supernatural creatures, too. Don't let her fool you. Well, they mostly love eating mortals because mortals, they can do the whole dagger slave and stuff like that because they take over your body and possess you. It's not, they don't really possess mm. supernatural beings too much. A whole other thing happens when they do stuff with like supernatural beings and things. So um, that's a whole other thing. That's actually one of the stories that's in the paperback and hardback of Cagliostro called La Draga. And it's a, mm. it's a mixture of the dagger Everybody root and look at me. a lichen. Talk about this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so the the that the Ladrega is a dagger root slave. Was a dagger root slave is someone who was freed from the possession of the dagger root worm. So they are kind of like you kind of feel weird after a possession, but with the dagger root, it's a little different. So you change. Mm -hmm. You aren't as mortal anymore. So a woman who was a dagger root slave, which means she had been possessed once by one and survived, which is not that's rare. She her mate was a lycran. So their child is a Ladrega, but he doesn't know that he is until he becomes of age when he shows what he really is, which is completely different than either one of his parents because mm -hmm. of the fusion. So he has his own story. In the world, Kaliastro, which I'm actually putting in the back of the book for the paperback and hardback. So that's another nice little awesomeness that they could get. But yeah, so anyway, he is on roll here and doing fine, I must say. Yeah, he's the, 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 the dagger. <laughs> dagger. She's like, no. I'm gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next question, Ed said, you find yourself trapped in the veil world unexpectedly. What's your immediate reaction? Because you were in the mortal world this entire time. But again, as I explained, all the supernaturals from the veil world can travel to the mortal world as they please. As a mortal, you cannot just go into the veiled world. If you end up in the veiled world, you either are one dead, two, some use of magic, which I don't know why you would want to go there at all, because everything there would like to eat you, destroy you, do other things to you. So you use some type of form of magic to get through the veil, or you are not human, mortal. So those three things, that's the only way for a mortal to get mm. into, or non-mortal to get into the veil, because supernatural can cross back and forth as they please, because the blood of the indifferent of supernatural the veil opens to you without a problem. So I'm fine with being on this side of the veil. I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> so ED picked A, explore the veil world and try to find a way back to the mortal realm. Technically, that's far as you do have to try to find a way back. Or B, panic and attempt to summon help from the supernatural beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> C, embrace the adventure and seek out knowledge about the veil world. So A's outcome. <clears throat> Let's see. see, mine was D. <laughs> <laughs> Exploring the veil world, your curiosity leads you to uncover ancient secrets and hidden knowledge, enhancing your understanding of both realms. Hmm. So now you have knowledge to continue on. While in the veiled world, you encounter a forbidden love interest, a creature from the other side. How do you proceed? Okay, now I like A. This. Pursue the forbidden love despite the risks. B. Suppress your feelings and focus on finding a way back home. This must be a K drama. Um, <laughs> watch those a lot. They always want that. C. Seek guidance from other supernatural beings about the consequences of such love. Well, he does have a liking right there. So just, hey, buddy, is this good? No. Um, <laughs> so, ED picked C. So let's see what the answer outcome for that is. So you get finally cautious. What the hell? <laughs> Thinking guidance. Other supernatural beings warn you of the dire consequences of pursuing forbidden love, saving you from a tragic fate. Good call on your part there. I can All think right. of this. We're going to get the award of the best survivalist of the Kaliastro game because, like, he's <laughs> You might not, there might not be any any dying on here. You still get to go to the next one. Because I'll again, if, it, if I wrote these, the reason why I didn't write the outcomes and the questions is because 
a lot of everybody be dying because I will kill you off in a minute. So it would not have been safe for anybody up in here. No, I don't mind killing killing people. Yeah, I would. That would be it. That would be I'll it. Kill you, I'll kill you if even if you're a main character. As soon as you saw the dagger room, I would be like, "Yep, yeah, it 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 possessed you, and then you you died." That would. That's why I didn't, because I wasn't biased about certain things. I know all the things, but see, I just put some information in and let the whole thing compute, and then let it do it itself, and it makes it makes it where it's, it's a little fair for everybody, because mm. everybody be dead right now. So, I can kill everybody. so fantasy, I get it. <laughs> all right, so the final question is: Finally, you stumble upon a portal back to the mortal realm. What's your parting thought as you step through? A, reflect on the adventures and lessons learned in the real world, real world. B, feel relief at returning to the familiar mortal realm. Or C, wonder about the mysteries still left undiscovered in the world, in both worlds. And E.D. picks C. So of let's see what the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> you funny, I can't. All right. <clears throat> so. I write a book about E.D.'s adventures. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. I can't. All right. Let's see. It's going to be a cute little note. I'm reading the right one. All right. So I think that's mystery still left undiscovered. Yes, I don't know if that's correct. I don't want to just double check that. I'm sure. SD is here. Oh, okay. Hi, SD. I can't and see. Made it. Hey, everyone. I'm going to be checking one second. Let me get ED answer the last one. So that's that's the fate. <laughs> Look at her. She's funny. I can't. She's funny. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let this ponytail is getting on my nerves. I'm going to take it off. Yeah, I know you get like, I just uh, roll across the room. <laughs> All right, wondering about the mystery mm-hmm. mysteries ahead. Your parting thought is one of curiosity and excitement as you step through the portal back to the mortal realm. You're filled with wonder about the mysteries that lie ahead, both in the mortal world and beyond. As you embark on the next chapter of your journey, you're in you're eager to continue exploring and discovering the unknown, knowing that adventure waits around every corner. So Edie's character persona is definitely someone who would be exploring in the veiled realm once again learned a lot made a friend with a lycra so you can technically have a guard when you go back so ed you will be definitely someone who will be passing back and forth through the veil because you obviously have a way in so that tells me you either mm-hmm. are part supernatural have magic well pixies gave you or are dead don't a forget nice that look. Or you could be a ghost, right? Hmm. And it's like, how did he survive? That's a good question. Now, I don't know if anyone will die, die, but he had a great outcome and probably would go back and forth between the veil realm. And he has a, oh, like a werewolf best friend. The pixies like him. Like the dagger was like, nah, this guy cool. Like he was just. I cannot. Like, good job on that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Shannon, thanks for um popping in. And yes, thank you for letting people know that they need. Oh, yeah, I had to remember to do that too. Oh my goodness. I cannot. This, this game is really, really fun too. By the way, it was really fun, especially with Aphrodite here. <laughs> of course, she always makes the game fun. She's like, listen, I don't know what's going on with you. I'm just, I just don't get it. I've never been Aww. that curious. <laughs> well, I hope the kiddo feels better soon. I don't know. I had to take the kiddo to an unexpected appointment, and that threw, me, oh, threw you off. Totally forgot about this as I tried to figure out dinner and everything. Yeah, there's a lot. There's always a lot going on. So yeah, thank you for popping in the chat though. So yeah, he's okay. He, he was happy to get a McDonald's afterwards. Of course, I'm what kid on? Like seriously though. Yeah, he food. McDonald's happy me all kinds of stuff. I'll be like, can I get Sonic? Hey, I want Sonic. <laughs> Sonic is good. They got them. They got them blasters and stuff. The slushies, yeah. Hey, Dante is the. All right, so let's meet the next it. person. 
And I think the next person up was what's the response? Um, are we gonna read one of the scripts? Um, we are gonna do one of those. So let me get one more person. I'll go through these a little faster. Aphrodite you being on the phone. You have to send me the one. Yeah, I do have to send you the one. So I have to read that one. I think the first one I have is the one with I'm um, near the beginning of the book with Allison and Charlie Ostro's conversation. So I think that's the one. I will send it to you. Let me do Barrett was number two, so let's see if Barrett survived. Let's see if Barrett survived. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back up here. And if I see any hiccups in the choices, but I think that was the only two that I saw I had an issue, but I can always just make it answer it directly. All right, so right from the start, Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up go the all right so you wake up in the middle of a dense forest you hear growling and rustling nearby what's your first instinct um very pixie climb a tree to get a better view uh, climbing a tree is never a bad idea i'm not gonna say this especially when you hear something suspicious if you can climb a tree though i'm just saying like i, I don't think i would make tree. it uh, it'll have, have a lot of limbs for me to get some foot placement. I can't shimmy up that thing. You just saw me when I did go to school for a little bit because I was homeschooled. I, I was in school for a little that bit. Get me safe. No upper body strength. I mean, I wasn't a dancer at that point. But I was like, no upper body strength. I couldn't go nowhere. I'm like climbing forever. Didn't move an inch. <laughs> <laughs> didn't move an inch. For police uh, academy, we had to, we had to um, climb an eight foot wall. <laughs> look, 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 look. Y'all you know my chubby so ain't getting no more tricks. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, it is, it is awesome. Thank you. I worked I worked my butt off to get it to look like that. Like, listen, I was upset. <laughs> <laughs> I, was so I was so tired. I'm like, this is getting on my nerves. And every time you think you had the right thing done, you had to redo the other thing because it just did not work out right. And I'm like, why did I decide to do this? Is what I started. <laughs> Please. All right. So let's see if Bird, how Bird's outcome. I don't know if anyone can die in this because the next game that's made, I'm going to have more time. I will make it, make it. And so I'm just warning y'all now, there will be blood. Um, you make me want to make one of these now. <laughs> you get, you'll get to live this time, possibly. I don't know. Maybe this will be different, but we'll see. So anyway, Barrett is up a tree, getting a view, <laughs> <laughs> getting a better view. So it says, oh you God. gain a vantage point, but attract the attention of predators lurking in the forest, putting oh, yourself you in danger. Right from the start, Barrett. Look, he said, let's be real. I'd fall down and be dead. Oh my goodness. Well, let's see what happens next. I don't know, but like even that start wasn't good. Okay, well oh well we know for sure that this, this part turns out well. While exploring, you encounter a wounded lycran. Mm -hmm. What do you do? A help the lycran and try to bend his wound. Well we know what the Sorry outcome of that, that is. <laughs> now nope, now you're good because now you have a lycran friend. The lycran appreciates your kindness and offers protection in return. You gain a valuable ally, which you'll need since some predators saw you. Mm. So, that's good. All right, I so no friends. I ain't gonna <laughs> have no allies. <laughs> there the whole time and probably got gotten by some. At least the dagger room probably didn't get unless it chased her. I'm not sure. But what are you like, doing? of course you help him. Like, how am I going to get away from him? <laughs> You're right, though. I'm not going to say you're wrong. That was that's good thinking because, <laughs> look, you thought, oh, hell no, we saw him. <laughs> right? I was like, I didn't know that. I'm like, wow, right from the start, Predator saw you. That's not right. All right, now let's see what happens next. <laughs> Adventure deeper into the forest. <laughs> you stumble upon an ancient room. What's your next move? So, Barrett picked A, into the runes to search for valuable artifacts. Oh, no. See, now, Barrett couldn't resist. 
Because lack like of melanin. Too. I like blingy things too, but I'm in the forest now, a cave. I'm going home. Listen, Murray was doing fine. He did go up the tree, but then the predator showed up. So who knew that was going to happen? Then he was, you know, took a chance, banished the lycran, and the lycran was nice. But then Barrett, lack of melanin, drove him into the cave <laughs> to, find, <laughs> to search and find things that none of us would be trying to find because we don't care. We don't, let it stay where it's at. Put it back. We don't need it. That's what we think. But. You know, sometimes it turns out well because E.D. also did a few little exploring. Like, hey, can the master of the world, both worlds, is, I'm just saying. So I can't even speak on that. I just wouldn't know nothing. I wouldn't I'd be, <laughs> I would, I'd be the, the mistress of the other side. <laughs> wait, either, wait. I would, my dumb ass went in the cave? Yeah, you would like, wow, you, you were over there? I, 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 I'm like, nope. Well, what about like, was I drunk? Yeah, maybe you were tipsy. You was like, you know, this world is messed up, so you just grab the first beer sitting on the side of the road in the woods. You just, you know, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't oh, drunk. The only way I'm crazy on the side of that was if I'm drunk and somebody dragged me. And or someone dragged somebody. you. They got to do both. Me. Yeah, they got to do both of those. All right, so let's see about the outcome. If I recall for this one, I think that one's the valuable artifact. Wait a minute. What are you doing? This is number three. Yeah. Okay. I'll be back. Mm. Your birds are acting funky. <laughs> okay. I think this one too. Let me see what I have left. I wish you could see him. Mm. He's oh, so upside down like a vampire. <laughs> well, you gotta tell me that he listened to this story, so he's like, I'm to give that a try. I don't know if what <laughs> um, so Barrett, your outcome is you explore the ancient room carefully, uncovering hidden chambers filled with valuable artifacts and ancient knowledge. However, mm. you also awaken a dormant guardian spirit who challenges you to a test of wit and courage. Succeed and you gain its favor and protection. Fail and you face its wrath. Mm. Well, I don't know what that outcome will be, but <clears throat> we, we can guess. Like, if you're witty, then you live. If you're not... He'll be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> Shouldn't have been in there to begin with, but <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll be fine. We don't, it doesn't go really much deeper in that one, so he should be fine. But it doesn't sound good. But Barrett was like, you tipping the danger scale. Like, you keep you keep tip, tempting all the beasts and monsters in this world. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so the next question is, suddenly you encounter a group of hostile vampires. Here comes the vampire part. How do you handle the situation? Barrett picked A, try to negotiate with the vampire. So let's see how this... <laughs> He's like, I don't know. <laughs> don't Take know. off all your clothes and offer yourself. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> I'm like, oh my. I can't. You're tall. <laughs> Is your name Skysguard by chance? Let me stop. <laughs> I love purple eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and things. Oh my. Okay. All right. So Ooh, those, are those claws real? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh gosh. I can't. All right. So negotiating with vampires. Your diplom your diplomacy impresses the vampires and they let you pass unharmed, sparing your life. Hey. You got you got that wit down apparently, Barrett. You survived. You there made you go. it. Again, mm. not all the vampires are Delada. So mm. these ones weren't ravenous, murderous vampires. Mm. They're no good ones. Yeah, I know, right? You thought you were a goner. I don't really think you're gonna die in this no, game. I, I, I knew he was gonna get out of there. I knew he was gonna get it's out. It's a it's a more of a discovery survival game. You're not going to die. Now again for the next game, this is luring you into a false sense of security, which I like to do. <laughs> and then when the next game comes, <laughs> now that play at your own risk. 
you know. So, <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> I learned a few things in college. I'm glad to hear we're calling <laughs> that. Oh, you know, so funny. No diplomacy jamming here. <laughs> Good times, yeah. I bet I know Barry was the, was the one. Listen, getting in trouble. I know it. Mm -mm. All right, so you find a hidden cave entrance inside. You discover a treasure chest guarded by Lache Fallen. What's your strategy? Barrett chose also a attempt to reason with the Lache Fallen and share the treasure. We know the outcome for this because reasoning with the Lache Fallen. Surprisingly, the Lache Fallen agrees to share the treasure with you peacefully, allowing you to claim your mm -hmm. share without bloodshed. See, now, the thing, Lache mean fallen. Now, the Lache Fallen isn't really anything to worry about because they sure. are individuals. So it could be a bad Lache Fallen or a good Lache Fallen or just a neutral Lache Fallen. Kaliastro's mm -hmm. mother is a Lache Fallen. She I don't wasn't. Trust her either. <laughs> There wasn't nothing bad. And she, she did something she was, wrong and she got she kicked with, out. Well, she did do something wrong. She fell in love with Kaliostro's father, who was a lycran. So he, she was a guardian, Lasha. So she was supposed to just be his guardian and she fell in love with him. And that's a no no. So she was falling, which I guess technically worked out because she got to be with him then, but she lost some of her abilities. She didn't lose them all. That being the case, but that anyway, that 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 one that one I would have been shocked if they had come up with one where like the Lashi Fall was like no, nah, and like cut your head off or something. That would have been like out of character. Like, well, they do tend to have girl. like uh, blades that they can um, they have girl. blades that they can make appear. So mm -hmm. in the story, mm -hmm. you'll notice that um, Kaliostro has a sword he can materialize. And he wears a necklace. The in his in the picture on the cover, he has a um, opal necklace on that was his mother's. The when he summons his blade, his sword is the handle is made of the opal from the necklace, and his sword is made of energy, so it can mm -hmm. cut through anything, lightsaber esque style. So the Lashe are known for materializing weapons. So that's why Kaliostro got that from his mother's side. Cool. So yes. Anyway, let's see what happens to Barrett now. While resting near a river, you notice strange movements in the water. What do you do? Barrett also chose investigate the riverbank cautiously, <laughs> which we know is a good option yep. because... <laughs> Let me go down and read it again. <clears throat> get it. <laughs> like, I don't get it. Look at her. <laughs> like, run. No, I mean, this actually was a good turnout for this one because of the, um, I think it was in the water. It was like, oh, you didn't bother us. So, you know, <laughs> we're fine I with you. I wasn't bothering people because I didn't read. <laughs> mm. I wasn't nowhere near them. That's funny. Too funny. Okay, so observing from a distance, you stay back and observe the strange movements in the water from a safe distance. You realize yeah. it's a group of friendly water sprites playing, and they gift you with a magical trinket as a token of their gratitude for not disturbing them. So, good again. So, night falls, and you hear eerie whispers coming from the darkness. Hmm. How do you react? Bird's like, hell no, in real life. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see what Barry picks here. Let's see what I think this section I have that in. Well, it might actually be, yeah, it's actually up at the top. Okay. All right. And Barry picks C. Follow the whisper to see where they lead. So let's see what happened to Barry. We didn't read this one. Following the whispers, the whispers lead you into a trap set by Ooh. dark creatures, resulting in your capture and enslavement. Oh no, Barrett! Barrett's been enslaved. He's like, oh no, he didn't. Form <laughs> 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 
Right. The, <laughs> oh, the form was like, yeah, it probably was. But, but, well, you know, you still get to go to the next question, even though it sounds like you've been enslaved. So you can still continue on to your next question because each question no, has his own outcome. He's, a, he's just in, he's indentured for 20 years and then they let him go. Yeah, he's enslaved, so yeah, you did get enslaved for a while. Barrett's the first person that, that got something bad happening, so it's not even so he got enslaved. Enslaved, Barrett. Okay, all right. We're gonna have to make like some some more merch that's like enslaved. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I trust the pixie. <laughs> I trust the pixie. Now enslaved. You know, right there like that. I listen to the whispers enslaved you know like that so he's like well i guess i'm alive <laughs> <laughs> um yeah for the for the kickstarter i have one for um instagram i can make, you, I, I can make you a uh square if you I need think, I mean, I could get it off of Instagram. I, I'll send it to you when we, when I'm done here, SD, for sure. Thank you for sharing it, too. But, yeah, um, let's see. Barrett's almost at the end, even though he's been enslaved. Let's see what the <laughs> next outcome is. <laughs> there are worse things. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> you come across a group of friendly pixies offering shelter for the night. Do you accept their offer? <laughs> And Barrett picked A, accept the Pixie's offer, and stay with them. So we know the outcome for this one. So it's slavery wasn't it. enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got into the, that. The whispers were water sprites, so the water sprites are like, nah, you a slave. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, accept the offer. The Pixies are delighted by your company and bestow upon you magical blessings that aid you in your journey after being slayed for several millennia. I don't really know the story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While exploring a cave, you encounter a dagger rue worm. Bert. <laughs> Listen. You read the book. Bert. <laughs> ED had an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even though this thing made the outcome with it, it's fine. But still, <sighs> you read the book. I'm just telling you. Anyway. Um, Barrett says, so how do you deal with this dangerous creature? Prince of A, attempt to, communicate, <laughs> attempt to communicate with the daggery worm peacefully, which actually turns out to work in this outcome somehow. Um, through careful negotiation, you convince the daggery worm to let you pass unharmed, avoiding becoming its next victim. Clearly, That's why the game is so fun. Because obviously... If you did try to negotiate with a dagger worm, mm. one, it's going to eat you. Mm. Two, it's going to eat possess you, you, eat you while possessing you. So, like, devour you, but it doesn't just eat you when you're just turned into nothing. It possesses you and then walks around in your body. Or three, something else terrible that I you don't want to know about. So nothing good will come from getting in contact with a dagger worm when you are mortal. Hmm. Which I'm assuming hmm, yeah, which one of the three? Like maybe the uh, unknown one, because maybe some good happens. Clearly E D <laughs> is magic and doesn't know it. Yeah, that part. And, and so is Barrett. Barrett is protected. Barrett's like, I was just curious, yeah. See, <laughs> curiosity killed the what class. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Meow. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So now we know that, you know, the dagger in this version was like, oh, yeah, you cool. I can talk because I got like six rolls of teeth and stuff, but you can understand what I'm saying. Six so, rolls of teeth. Yeah. It's like, like a goddamn giant worm with shark in there. <laughs> And it's like you're alive while it's eating you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's three a, times bigger than you. You do not have a. It's about six feet. About six feet. Wow. Why yeah, so you I don't want to talk to that. But yeah, but in this case, you you okay because it that's the way the game worked out for a little bit. Yay, everybody who survived. 
But if you anyway, lived in I, our realm, it'd be in Australia. That's how weird that it part. is. That part. Listen. Hmm. All right, so you find yourself trapped in the veil world unexpectedly. I don't know how you got there. What's your immediate reaction? Barrett also picked <laughs> explore the veil world and try to find a way back to the mortal realm. Now, it's still smart to try to find your way back because honestly, what else can you do once you're there and you don't know how you got there? Like, there's really no other option. Let's be honest. Even Allison is in that predicament. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. <clears throat> like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So that makes sense to me. That's always, I think that's a good one. I, I the pick. I don't really know what else you do. Panicking and trying to get supernatural beings to help you. Like, you don't know who's okay. <laughs> and who's not. Like, who not will you or do other things. But anyway, so the outcome for this one as we know, because ED also went with this option, your curiosity leads you to uncover ancient secrets and hidden knowledge and count enhancing your understanding of both realms. And then, while in the veiled world, you encounter forbidden love interests, a creature from the other side. How do you proceed? Barrett chose A, pursue the forbidden love despite the risk. Well, let's see what happens. Because that's the same thing Aphrodite probably did. I guess, and I didn't even see it yet. Um, <laughs> so, encountering the forbidden love, despite the risk, your love transcends boundaries, and you find happiness in the veil world, forging a unique bond with your supernatural partner. Oh, wait, I gotta stay? I well, we yeah. Break it up. You break Wow, that was short lived. I don't know what did, did you did know, understand, you know, like benefits and then you know, go home. Well, I'm just gonna tell you now, like some of the creatures on the other side of the veil might not be privy to our ways. <clears throat> you might be up forever, and if you're not, then there could be a clause, like so it might end up bad for you. I mean, I'm gonna just have to establish ain't that no make the life bullshit. Well, you gonna have a choice because, yeah. Nah. Oh no, I mean, that we we should, out well. But you gotta come to my side. I'm not staying over here with dagger worms. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Aphrodite, the dagger worms are more likely to get you on the in the mortal world. Mm, no, they ain't. So that's where they get you, get you. Now, when you con come in contact with a dagger root in the veiled world as a mortal, you're probably already dead and they're going to eat your soul. Because hey. you're only your soul at that point. Because technically, the veiled world for the mortals who are dead are passing through. So if you pass through and so happen you run into a dagger root, it will eat you and destroy your existence. I love how so. you explain all this to me. I ain't going in no damn dagger root. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't got no worries. I I have more worries of being killed by a shark. And I don't even go put my feet in shark pee. So I ain't ever got to worry about sharks nor dagger <laughs> You're too funny. I can't. I um, so Barrett... <clears throat> Finally, you stumble upon a portal back to the mortal realm. What's your parting thought as you step through? <laughs> he, uh, Bird picked feel relief at returning to the familiar mortal realm. So I can't. I, I imagine so. It was a lot of run-ins, man. You've been enslaved. I mean, you've been predators enslaved. looking at you using a tree, like made friends with a liker. <laughs> That's part of the best part. But yeah. So let's see. What your choice you picked to be for this one? All right, let's see. Don't stop making out. Huh, the birds is like, listen, spicy in here. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Sorry, you're in the comments. They had no shame. I don't know where oh. <laughs> Whoa! I don't think I saw this coming. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, I was wrong, y'all. Wait. Well, nobody could die. But I was wrong. So. You done killed my boy? Oh, <laughs> Wait no. a minute. 
Wait a minute. So, Edie gets to go do the craziest, most so, foolish <laughs> choices that he survived. I must you know have hours. I have to read it. So facing the ultimate this is, consequence. This is a light skinned people game. <laughs> So you're gonna face the ultimate consequence because I guess the maybe the picking B and feeling the relief of going back to the mortal realm and not exploring at all. I don't know. Your inability to adapt and survive in both realms ultimately leads to your demise. A cautionary tale of the dangers that lurk in Kaliastro. I see having a lycra in front ain't work out for you. <laughs> Hanging out you know with pixies right. and whispers. I was like, why? Why? Wow. Right. That ain't fair. <laughs> that ain't right. right. I don't even understand myself. Like, Bradley, I'm not coming back to the regular world. Well, like, you <laughs> right. tried to the two, and then the, I know I don't have a chance. So well, you said, neither did me and Slutty. <laughs> yes. I don't have a damn chance. <laughs> I don't have a chance. <laughs> Oh, look at the cave. I'm alone in the woods. Don't know how I got here, but let's go into the dark, unknown, unexplored cave. Oh, and my God. Oh, my goodness. I can't. I'm in tears over here. Y'all fun. Um, I'm looking at oh, me. <laughs> oh, is that what you meant, Barry? Oh, my goodness. I mean, All it's right. not, see, it's not on your side anymore. I, I, it totally tricked me. I didn't know that it even had outcomes. Like, oh, what? You not gonna explore this world? That's it for you. Like, wow, that's kind of cold. That, that, that's cold. Okay. Cool. Damn. That's wow. Cool. Okay, then. Well, here we go. Then let's see who's next. I don't know if Dahlia came in first. Or Aphrodite. Aphrodite did. So Aphrodite's your turn. Okay. <laughs> we can just be <laughs> through my dot at every turn. Dot, but try. I tried. I, I, I ain't climbing no damn tree. It's not a, it's not a bad motto. <laughs> All right, you wake up in the middle of, of the forest. You hear I'm growling. Man, I'm in the forest. <laughs> you, are, you hear growling and rustling nearby. What's your first instinct? Hide and observe the surroundings. So you remain hidden and observe the surroundings carefully. You spot a group of hostile vampires passing by without noticing you. I do want to say one thing. Mm. I wouldn't observe a damn thing. I would hide. <laughs> I chose the best of the three every I, time. I understand. But you survived yeah. this one. Um, allow you to evade danger and continue your journey safely. All right. So your next one is while exploring and you encounter a wounded Lycran. What do you do? B was her option. Avoid the Lycran and sneak away quietly. Let's see what outcome that would have. Avoiding the Lycran. The Lycran feels betrayed and attacks you, leaving you oh, wounded no. and vulnerable in the forest. Like I wasn't already. <laughs> <laughs> see, Bird had a uh, thing here. He was like, yeah, like I could outrun him like I had a choice for the help. See, you heard about that. I ain't touching no damn Lycran. And 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 see, was like, you gonna make it, Bird. I mean, she just got attacked by Lycran. Whatever attacks the damn Lycran is probably still around. <laughs> if the Lycran couldn't handle them, what was I going to do with it? I mean, that's true, but it could be another Lycran. I mean, they do get into fights, you know what I mean? I still can't beat no Lycran. This is true. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, because you're not like you're dead or anything. Yeah, I mean, you could die at the end, clearly. But that would be I feel the like end. I'm already dead. I'm on the other side of the veil. <laughs> well,. I'm not sure about the placement here. I think you don't get into the veil until near the end. You're in the mortal world at this time. So Lycrans can be all up in there. So you still happen to come across one and you're passing. I'm lucky. But, hmm. me. I was minding my business and I was attacked <laughs> by Lycran. Okay. What else? As you venture what else deeper happens? into the forest, you stumble upon an ancient rune. What's your next move? Ignore the runes and continue exploring the forest with Aphrodite. Think we knew that though. Fuck that rune. <laughs> I can't. I'll tell but, some people to come back and look at it. Mary's <laughs> like, I can't believe I didn't make it to the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not making it through the first chapter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hmm. That is too funny. I just can't. Mary cracked me up. Oh my goodness. 
All right, let me pull this back up so I can see what happens next. All right, and I'm going to share the screen. So we got another backer. Let's see. Regent, share screen. And this one? Yeah, this one looks fun. <laughs> so yay, we have five backers now. What? We have 261. So yay. So yay, people are checking out the stuff. It's great. I'm so glad. But we have like someone got some the ebook option. Let's see what else we got. Girl, this this Kickstarter is beautiful. I'm glad it turned out well. We gotta keep checking back, check it back. And I have one from for the hardback edition. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. And we have I think we have a the big one. We have uh yeah, the big book box, the veil the book box. So <clears throat> That one has everything in it, like like a book, a book version with that one. All right, so that's what's happening with the Kickstarter. So it's also a great start first day. Like, look at that. We're already like about halfway there. Like, look at that. That's great. We're actually halfway there right now. Perfect. All right, so let's go back and see if Aphrodite makes it. Yeah, you call that one the God tier, right? Yeah, the big one. <laughs> book box, yeah. Shoot, we all kinds of stuff up in there. All right, so let's go. All right, so here we go. The next one, I think we were trying to find the answer to this one, the rune. So see how Aphrodite made it out or what happened to her. We don't know yet. That's the river. <laughs> the god here. <laughs> Oh, not that one. Oh, the runes. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. I'll pick up. All right. So you pick C, Aphrodite. Ignore the runes and continue exploration. You choose to ignore the runes and continue exploring the forest. While you avoid any immediate dangers within the runes, you miss out on opportunities to uncover ancient secrets and valuable treasure hidden within its depths. She's the I don't care. I don't care. No part of me cares. I think I was told to have the big one. Because someone might back you. Right. The God tier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So let's see how Aphrodite continues on. <clears throat> All right. So the next one up is oh, oh my, the vampire. Ain't got no treasure. Suddenly you encounter a group of hostile vampires. How do you handle the situation? Aphrodite oh. flees and hides until the vampires leave. Let's see how that works out because I don't know. Well, she's already evaded one group of vampires, so. <laughs> That's true. The second group is like, hey, we back. Like, <laughs> all they're not friends with Delilah because she sucks. Literally. <laughs> Literally, yeah, you're right. She with the vampires, yes. Where are the vampires? We are down here. <laughs> I think the Russian phone was not. <clears throat> the vampire out because she's bleeding from being attacked by a light grin. I know. Well, you might have passed her wounds. We don't know. Fleeing from the vampires, you managed to escape, but the vampires mark you as prey, making you a target for future encounters. Oh, that's right. You got this. Now you got attacked by the light grin and the vampires. Like, I'm not sure your blood gonna handle this. Like, you're gonna be turned into something and I later. Had no treasure. And for no some treasure. reason, for some reason, I'm lost in the woods. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm right? that, that's, really that's smart. Seems smart, but no. I mean, you get attacked. Technically, that wasn't the best I'm option in this because, situation. No, that's bullshit. He attacked me because I didn't help him because something attacked him. No, he should have attacked the person that attacked him. He felt betrayed he because he was, was a good lycrin. Okay, he was a good lycrin, and you 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 judge him by his appearance. Oh, you should have okay? beat him. Someone that beat him up, girl. You was being prejudiced. Him. Okay, you just thought he's a he's a beast. I can't trust him. He's I was like, what? I was trying to turn my life. He don't know if I was gonna go fast. Like, what? Him. Is that what you think of me? I'm gonna prove you right by biology. attacking you. I don't know no lycrin biology. I was gonna go find somebody to help him. He don't know. <laughs> Well, no, you made him upset, and so he proved you right by attacking you. So anyway, 
<laughs> Should the one running away call someone a punk? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> asking. Asking. Um, wow, anyway. Wow, wow. <clears throat> Double, triple punk. Uh, your birds call that already. Your birds are singing like she a punk. Um, you find a hidden cave entrance. Inside, you discover a treasure chest guarded by a lot of people. What's your happen? strategy? <laughs> Leave the cave and explore other areas. Well, Aphrodite <clears throat> decided that leaving the cave, you miss out on the treasure, but avoid a potential deadly confrontation with the light and fall. Light, light shade falling. Which, you know, I don't know. I think the only way that the light shade will hurt you probably if you engage in combat with the light shade in this case. So hopefully I no one picks B. Yeah, I, I wouldn't that. either because they materialize <laughs> weapons and stuff. So that wouldn't have turned out well. So either one of the other options were good. A and C, as you see. Hmm. While resting near a river, you notice strange <laughs> He's like, I never would. <laughs> You know, strange movements in the water. What do you do? Oh, After I said, yes. ignore the movements and continue resting. She would not do that, but it's as close as we can get to what she would do. Um, ignoring the whispers, you fall victim. Okay, I'm re I'm sorry, I read the wrong one. That's the second one, but uh, if she picked me, she she's still in trouble, which it looks like she did. So I'll be reading that in a second. Let me go down to where the river answers <clears throat> are, because either way, it don't look good for her. Um, but B, <laughs> I can't. I'm resting at a river right there. Problem. So ignoring the movement, and this is the river, make sure this is the river. Yes. Ignoring the movement, you decide to ignore the strange movements in the water, assuming it's nothing of importance. Later, you realize it was a warning sign of approaching danger. And you narrowly escape an ambush by hostile water de de dwelling creatures, thanks to your quick reflexes. So you escaped, but um, barely. Hmm. Well, Good I thing mean, you didn't I'm drink from it. the water because drinking must be the worst option. So C is the worst option in this case for people. Why would I drink the river water when something is moving in it? Look, 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 look at Barry's about take a dip. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cement ponds. <laughs> Swim. <laughs> no, we do not. Hey, you get funny. some damn malaria drinking the water. Thank you. I know I'm not. Crazy. Oh hell no! Right? It's about drink, drink from the river without hesitation. Like I don't know so, who was doing oh, that. There's something moving, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip <laughs> of the malaria laden water. I'm already wounded. Ain't got no treasure lost in the dark. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm goodness, just saying. Come on, they, 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 they started <laughs> off bad. Who is drinking some nasty unfiltered water, right? <laughs> well, apparently <laughs> someone is like moving in it. <laughs> coming from the desert. You know, like you might have never had nothing to drink in a while. You know, like it's been a while. Look, look, look at Easy drinking water right now. I'm just going to think of other ways, better ways to die. Perfect timing. It's Easy. cultured. Perfect timing. It is. I see that. I promise it's not from the pixies giving it to me. Like, mm, mm, mm. oh my goodness. Okay, so Aphrodite, I, I had glanced your other response and it didn't sound like it was leading anywhere good. But anyway, let <laughs> me read it. Night falls and you let me hear go get my blonde hair. Harry, <laughs> with my hair here somewhere. I see my red hair. Okay. My red hair might might help me a little bit. Maybe, maybe yeah. And you hear eerie whispers coming from the darkness. How do you react? Aphrodite picked B, ignore the whispers, and try to get some sleep. Paul S. <laughs> <laughs> so ignore the whispers. Paul S. You fall victim to unseen dangers lurking in the darkness. Of course I do. Losing your way and risking capture by malevolent creatures. So you're in danger right now, but... We don't know the outcome. <laughs> Depends on what you pick near the end. I'm really. in danger right now. You I'm in danger. You for about two hours. Danger the whole entire time. Like I don't understand. <laughs> like how did you manage that? You're like, I'm sorry. I'm making the right decisions, and I'm still in danger. Oh my! I'm leaving my alone. The wrong, the wrong I'm one. Running, apparently, yeah. but I'm still in danger because I didn't help some creature <laughs> who was probably going waiting for me to come over there so he could eat me. <laughs> we know that's not true. Trap when I see he one. becomes your friend because you judge him harshly, and then he had to prove you right. I was going to send somebody to be his friend. <laughs> 
I got Ooh. friends. Ooh. Apparently, they mm. abandoned me. On the okay, so you, you come across a group of friendly pixies offering <laughs> shelter for the night. Do you accept their offer? So Aphrodite said, B, decline the offer, continue your journey alone. Let's see, they might get mad because it seems like stuff is getting mad. So declining the pixie's offer, alone and vulnerable, you str struggle to survive the night, haunted by the dangers of the forest. So you're just constantly in danger the entire time of the journey. And like anything could happen to you at any moment whatsoever. Like, I'm safer without them pics. I ain't gonna even look, look, Brian said you were sending the worm to be friendly, huh? Like the dagger. He's like, you go over there and check out that light room. Because I heard he always wanted to become a LaDraca. So the, the light room who you, you said you was going to send friends. So Brian said, why are you send the, you going to send the worm over there? Yeah, I sent the worm over there to help him out. <laughs> or the, or the friendly pixies. <laughs> Yeah, because in the story, the they the pixie actually um in my horror collection there is a story based around the pixies in Kaleopatra's world. Um, she's actually in the, during the story it shows like how the pixies work in Kaleopatra's world, but then that, them and one is this very specific one over in the mortal realm. So you get to see that story unfold. So you get to see, get a more taste of the creatures in that collection, which I is that collection. Taste, I is, taste nothing else. You gonna be taking? I don't know if you gonna make it through that book though. I'm just saying because it's all straight up horror. I had it's straight a hard up time horror in that whole collection. I'm wrong with that. I barely made it through that. Hi, thank you. Cheers. From all the way from Germany. Hello. Yay! That makes me smile. <laughs> all right, so. Let's see how Aphrodite is going to handle the Daggeru situation. <laughs> While exploring the cave, you encounter a Daggeru worm. How do you deal with this dangerous creature? Aphrodite said retreat from the cave and find another path. So that is C. So let's go to C and see what happens. <clears throat> Again. Oh, okay. So this one comes out. Okay. Daggeru worm. And had an option to do something ironic. So retreating from the cave, you narrowly avoid a confrontation with the dagger worm, preserving your safety from preserving your safety for the time being. But you are safe for once. For the time being. <laughs> yeah, really though, literally. Yeah, look, <laughs> it's like Aphrodite, run. <laughs> yeah, my girl did though. She did run. She made it out of that one at least. That one's a little safe though. <laughs> oh no! I will come to stream when I'm drunk tonight. So. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You can be drunk. It's cool. Being in the chat counts too. All right. You so, ain't safe on the stream anyway. <laughs> yeah, you play, you play this game, a survival game. It's not that bad though. I mean, I could have if I did all the stuff myself, it would have been way worse. Like nobody. I don't think anybody would have made it out. I'm I convinced bet. of that. All right. All right. So she. Let's see what her next move was. You find yourself trapped in the veil world unexpectedly. What is your what's your immediate reaction? So Aphrodite said, "We knew this though. Panic and attempt to summon help from supernatural beings." <laughs> yeah, I know, Barrett. Barrett's like, I feel that would make that stream get extra spicy. It probably did. I was screaming bloody murder. <laughs> <laughs> you was like, oh, yeah, I believe that. It sounds quite accurate. It does. All right, so this is for the track. Okay, let me make sure I read the right one here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> let me go back up. Back root. Okay. Yeah, she she screams. She panicking. Everybody else. Oh, that's not that's not good. What? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I you was panicking and attempting to summon help from supernatural beings. I mean, I said that this word wasn't the best idea. So, panicking and summoning help. So, your cries for help attract the attention of dark creatures, leading to your capture and enslavement in the veil world. So, you also... Oh, golly. ...got enslaved like Barry did. I can't get I mean, you. screaming at you. I'm wounded. I'm wounded. Why do me? <laughs> Well, that's good to know. <laughs> speak, speak well English while you're drunk. Hey, we take German too. That's fine. 
All right. So, the thing I know in German is, right now is Oma. Um, I know, I only know a few, little bit in German because I love German metal. <laughs> so the first line, the word I learned in German is Todd von each gut. And it's like, it's cool to be dead or cool, cool <laughs> death because it's a song about being a vampire. Oh, uh, wait. She but it's a metal smoke. song. <laughs> so it, it's a cool song. I belly danced on it back in the day. So I was I was one of those belly dancers that explored heavy music back in the day, and everybody See, else was looking at me like, "What?" I, I'll belly so I was belly dancing, belly dancing to the heavy metal death metal. So and that song got some hard beats, just like do 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 do. It's not playing, man. Some crazy good music. So anyway, <laughs> like I died just because I was ready to get. <laughs> what? Yeah, that was good. Mm. Oh man, you making me hungry. I do like the peanut butter um blizzard. Those, oh, those look good. Don't be talking about Sonic, you know. I go to Sonic as so. <laughs> well. All right, so the next one is okay. Of course, Aphrodite. We knew her answer, didn't we? Pursue the forbidden love despite the risk. This is uh, why in the veil yeah. world you encounter forbidden love interest, a creature from the other side. How do you proceed? So uh, some love. This one didn't turn out poorly, as you know, because Barrett was, you know, you and Barrett think the same when it comes down to the blues. We also got enslaved. <laughs> Y'all both did get enslaved, so imagine that. That's a little, a little much. For two different reasons. <laughs> Two different reasons, that's true. So encountering forbidden love, despite the risk, your love transcends boundaries, and you find happiness in the veiled world, forging a unique bond with your supernatural partner. So that turned out well, but you didn't seem to like the veiled world, so you might have a bad outcome anyway, because you're trying to break up already. Like, you're not even, you're not a ride or die in that situation. You're like, no. I'm not saying we have to break up. I'm saying I ain't Long saying. distance? You take that extra mile, round distance. Why he can't meet me to the other side? I ain't safe on his in this world. Clearly, look, I'm broken. <laughs> if it, I've been attacked, I can't. I'm just say it. Mm-hmm. No. Look, Burns, like, listen. Just because someone is a monster in the veiled world doesn't mean I can't change him. Okay, like if this is true. Yeah. Because look, Caliastro is. We all love a project from the veiled world, and he's like he's also a billionaire CEO in the mortal realm. I mean, I'm just saying he got good credit. He do. He owns a hotel chain. He's rich, rich, rich. Okay, like he got my boy got hotels Check everywhere. Like boxes. he has he has a manor in the veiled world. Oh, wait, like you be safe baby with him. Mamas? Any baby mamas? No. Okay, so. <laughs> All the he got none at all. So all the boxes are checked. He good. He got he got a job. You know. <laughs> Hey, we gonna go there. We gonna there. And he's fine. I saw his he is, uh, and he can fly you wherever you need to go. You have to. Well, I ain't doing plane. no, 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 no. If he ain't got a jet, he ain't flying me nowhere. Uh, did you not hear when he was like, "If you run, he gonna chase you." Like you missed the byline on the. Did you need me to show you the kickstart again? Said, um, you run, he will chase you. From him, I saw. If I see him, I'm gonna be like, "Oh." Hey. I told. Look at look at. He did. And, when and I he told. Didn't say, like, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, after. when I told her the line, that line, it was in the book. That line is in the book. And he says that to Allison, which is why it's the, the, the byline I've used. And when Aphrodite read that, she was like, if he said that, I would be like, immediately would run so he can catch me. She- <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I, I have know. fallen. I'm I trying have to escape. My ankle and I have fallen. <laughs> Whatever will happen to me? Whatever shall I do? Please don't ravage me for hours and hours. Like, no one mentioned ravishing, but she did. You see what I'm saying? Look at that. <laughs> so, Aphrodite, you're on your final one. Let's see what you pick. Oh, oh. My daughter said I wouldn't be fun. <laughs> well. And you wouldn't be fun. Aphrodite. Why, Aphrodite? Why? Why did what? you pick this one? Wait, finally, you fresh. finally you stumble upon a portal back to the mortal realm. What's your parting thoughts as you step through? I'm you pick B. Feel relief at returning to the realm 
Mortal Realm, but you're not going to return. That's it for you. It's over. What? It's over. You what? didn't make it. How oh, I don't get to make it? You I've been it. mistreated and abused and hurt. Based in the ultimate consequences, you're in the I ain't no that and survive because been... you broke up with the, the person you supposed to love. Now you go back. So now you go. Mm -mm. I pulled out all my tricks. Realms ultimately lead to your demise. A cautionary tale of danger that lurk in Kaliosto's world. Mm -mm -mm. That ain't <sighs> right. That I really can't. Right. I, I didn't I'm think glad you were going to make that. You made it home. I didn't think you were going to make that. But I'm hating. Because yeah, I ain't make it home. I am kind of surprised. I, I didn't know she was going to pick that. When I got to say, I didn't see that coming. I wanted look, to go look, home. Look at, look at you trying to show off. Yeah, the cigarettes are you not listening. I didn't even see what it said. You're the only one that's going to be drunk. I don't drink. Never taste the little Aphrodite. She, she might have some wine in the house. I don't know. So I don't know about that. I don't drink, though. But I can't help you. Yeah. I don't have All right, so we have one more person to read, and that would be Dahlia D. Let's see is how Dahlia here? did. Uh, I don't know if she's still here, but she did do the challenge. So we're going to read her questions live, her answers live. So let's see what happens here. And Dahlia writes horror, so let's see what she thinks about, like, trying to survive. Let's see what goes on. All right, so, and after this, we'll read the one scene, but I think we're not going to do both scenes. I want to keep everybody forever. We've been here for a minute now. <laughs> Um, you wake up in the middle of the dense forest. You hear growling and rustling nearby. What's your first instinct? Dahlia picked hide and observe the surroundings, similar to Aphrodite's pick, which that makes you your main hidden and above and observe the surrounding carefully. You spot a group of hostile vampires passing by without noticing you, allowing you to evade danger and continue your journey safely. Then, while exploring, you encounter a wounded lycan. What do you do? Dahlia said, help the Lycran and try to bandage his wounds, which you know the outcome for that. The Lycran appreciates your kindness and offers protection in return. You mm. gain a valuable ally. So, mm. Dahlia made a good choice in this case. As you've been I deeper into the enough horror movies because she She do, but she might, have, she might have guessed this one right because uh, she might uh, like werewolves, so I don't know. As you venture deeper into the forest, you stumble upon an ancient rune. What's your next move? Dahlia said, ignore, because this is her melanin speaking, okay, because all of us <laughs> chose this one, even if it was a bad Men idea for this thing. Women did not. <laughs> so, ignore the runes and continue exploring the forest. Now, I wouldn't explore the forest either. So, that would be that. But, <laughs> so, let's see. Um, that's, That would be C. So, let's go to C section. And ignore the runes and continue exploring the forest. That would be here. I think. Right here we go. C. You choose to ignore the runes and continue exploring the forest. While you avoid any immediate dangers within the runes, you must you miss out on opportunities to uncover ancient secrets and valuable treasures hidden within its depths. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no treasures I don't know exist. Not oh, too bad. So, sad. <laughs> so suddenly you encounter a group of hostile vampires because you knew they were coming back around. How do you handle the situation? Now, Dahlia said flee and hide until the vampires leave, which you know <laughs> did not lead anywhere well because that's the same thing Aphrodite did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It did not it did not end up well. So you Manage to escape, but the vampires mark you as prey, making you a target for future encounters. So you're marked. Rude, so rude. So you're marked. Um, you find a hidden cave entrance. Inside, you discover a treasure chest guarded by a lache fallen. What's your strategy? Dahlia <laughs> said, leave the cave and explore other areas. So she also See? did that same. Well, I'm telling you, it's the middle one. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> we got the middle. We already cautious of a lot of stuff. So when it's a place that looks sus, we don't go explore. We don't care. We don't know what's happening there. We don't want to know. We don't want to know. 
So we just stay clear. But you know, in this case of this game, that might get you in trouble. Clearly, as we have read, ED was the master. Nothing bad happened to him the whole time. He had friends everywhere. He had everywhere. all. The, he had all the jewelry. Treasure. Yo, he got pixies giving him magic trinkets and like my boy was the, the man. I still say was. false sense of security. I still don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my boy made it out too. I'm just saying and he could probably go back and forth between Veil World and there. Come and... back and get us. <laughs> you gotta come back and save stuff. him. You gotta come back and save people. What's that? Mm -mm. I mean, I'm belly dancing and everything, but you know, my hips gonna start lying. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's see. The next one is while resting near a river, you notice strange movements in the water. Uh oh! What do you do? Dahlia, pick, ignore the movements and continue resting. I mean, you and Dahlia, like y'all, 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 in Patico, y'all. Like we all matching up, y'all on the same page for real, real. Okay, so you know, <laughs> resting near the river, I think, isn't a bad thing if I remember right. I think something bad happened. I'm almost sure. Let me see. <laughs> Let's see what happened here. We mm -hmm. shall overcome <laughs> All right, so she picked B. B is you approach the river cautiously to investigate oh, this, okay. the strange movement. Sadly, a massive river sprite uh, merges. A massive one. Well, I didn't realize I said massive last time. But you managed to calm it. Oh, with your soothing words. Is this the right one? Make sure read what yeah, it is. Okay. No, wait a minute. She didn't pick. She didn't pick that. She picked hell no. No, she picked B. Ignoring the movements. Let me see. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, you decide to ignore the strange movements in the water, assuming it's nothing of importance. Later, you realize it was a warning sign of approaching danger, and you narrowly escape an ambush by hostile water-dwelling creatures thanks to your quick reflexes. Still make it out, but it's like, you know, that danger thing again. Now, it seems like she like it picking B right now, so <laughs> that don't stay safe the whole time, I know. Night falls, and you hear eerie whispers coming from the darkness. How do you react? Dahlia said, ignore the whispers and try to get some sleep. I know this one turned out bad. I remember that this one was a bad choice. That 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 I do remember. It wasn't good. Because after that, I got treasure chests in my windowsill. I don't need no damn cave. You fall victim to unseen dangers lurking in the darkness, losing your way, and risking capture by malevolent creatures. So you are just on the edge of danger right now, Dahlia. If you watch this on replay, girl, I'm just telling you. Um, you come across a group of friendly pixies. Oh boy. Offering shelter for the night. Do you accept their offer? Dahlia also picked V. Decline the offer, continue your journey alone. So Cause she declining, doing no such thing as a friendly pixie. <laughs> declining the pixie offer. Alone and vulnerable, you struggle to survive the night, haunted by the dangers of the forest. Just on the edge. I mean, you're At least I'm not by myself. While exploring a cave, you encounter a daggeroo worm. How do you deal with this dangerous creature? She picked C, retreat from the cave and find another path. But she knew not to mess with the daggeroo worm. Um, unless you're ED and you actually communicated with it and you apparently diplomatic and okay, we like, have like this guy. Yeah, I must be magical or something. We I, really, I mean, only one you, only one, no one picked yet was B, attack the dagger, which I would want to see what happens with that. So well, I'm have to read that later. It said that the thing was dangerous and it was a worm. <laughs> I'm not going in nothing, a danger worm. A danger <laughs> worm? <laughs> like, it's I encountered a danger worm. You narrowly avoid a confrontation with the dagger <laughs> worm, preserving your safety for the time being. So you're fine still. You find yourself trapped in the veil world unexpectedly. What's your immediate reaction? Dahlia picked C. Embrace the adventure and seek out knowledge about the veiled world. She like, That's girl, what happened to you? <laughs> she lost points. Her car about to be taken away. <laughs> so 
embracing the adventure your adventurous spirit leads you to discover new realms and forge unexpected alliances enriching your journey wow so <laughs> yeah <but laughs> that is as long as i can okay so while in the veiled world you encounter forbidden love interest a creature from the other side how do you proceed um Dahlia picked C. Seek guidance from other supernatural beings about the consequences of such love, which I think we did hear this one, and we are in C, so let's double check that. Seeking C. guidance. Other supernatural uh, beings warn you of the dire consequences of pursuing forbidden love, saving you from a tragic fate. Like, so. like she didn't know that going. I wonder if B is a bad outcome, like the pressure feeling and focus on finding your way back home, and the person be like, what? And then it'll attack you. <laughs> and every time that seems to be the case, because the vampires, uh, I think the, the Lycran would do that. And I think the Pixies got mad when you do that, a per certain one. Like, everything's like, what? You feel bad of me? <laughs> now I want to prove you right. Like, why? Why? You mean you me mortal right? check? Why are you bothering us? <laughs> Finally, you stumble upon a portal back to the mortal realm. What's your parting thoughts as you step through? Dahlia picked A, reflect on the adventures and lessons learned in the veiled world. So let's see what that um, outcome is. I'm Find a way to bad. forever seal the portal. <laughs> I mean, I, none of my choices was up there. Mm. Your cautious approach allows you to navigate safely through the challenges of the mortal world. Oh, emerging man. unscathed from each encounter. Wow. So I'm still stuck. That's <laughs> all I know. She practically said and did the same thing. But those, those two. Well, my ass still differences. stuck. Okay. I get it, man. Well, that's all the responses we got for tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna do a script reading. We still think fun. it's rigged. <laughs> <laughs> so just going to do the one Maybe thing. Just come back and get me, please. I will save you. Use your magic. Come back and get me. I will send my lichen. <laughs> or lycrin, oh, sorry. Wait, hold up. I'll see, see I'm not going to trust it. <laughs> you had to oh, come with it. That's right, hilarious. I'll just talk to myself. Oh, jeezy peasy. Lemon squeezy. That's too funny. <laughs> I think we're going to read the second scene, Aphrodite. An unexpected visitor. Oh, I actually have it, I think. Yeah, you sent it to me. So I mean, it's I know not, I have it, but I mean, I might be able to pull it up. Let me see if I can pull I it up. I think you can pull it up from the email, if nothing else, so I can send it to you. Nope, I just got it. Okay, cool. Because this is the one with Dahlia, um, the, the Lada, and Kaliastro having their little spats. Oh, so, okay. Um, yeah. So, ED, I don't know. Lada or Kaliastro? <laughs> Um, we I guess we can email it to Ed. Uh, yeah, can, okay, let me email it to you because I'll do the narrative part, which is only like I think two parts or so, and then the lines. All right, let me send this to you. Send a so can you, you open? Ed, you want to be Delada or you want to be Caliastro? Uh, Ed is going to be Caliastro. I'm gonna make him take Caliastro. I think that would be cool. All right. Let's do let that. Me and, so I can click um, it. let me. Um, Ed, can you open the PDF? Is that cool? Uh, yeah. Or would I you prefer the word PDF? Okay. The word might shift. It might, but I'm and uh, the PDF is fine. You said. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay, let me send that. Then. You said unexpected visitor, right? Yeah, it is. That's the second one. Oh, no, you okay, cool. So, did you hear your outcome? You did survive the game. Oh, as long as I know how to love. <laughs> yep, she I made it. Now you made it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and email this to you. You're going to open up my Gmail real quick. Fast here. I got all my life to live. <laughs> right. On the other side of it. I don't know side of it. I got all my love to give. I'll survive. <laughs> I will survive. All right. Let me see. So wait. 
what what am I waiting for? Eric got to go home ultimately, right? So I'm literally the only one left stuck over there. It's like I don't know if you and you stuck over there. You didn't survive. Um, and Barrett, Barrett, um, I think Barrett didn't survive, right? I think Barrett got got, got gotten. Yeah. See, my I think, birds. I said. So I is it like it's quite, quite even? It's quite even. All right, Edie, do I have your email? I thought I did. Uh, you should have it anyway. I think I do. Yeah. <clears throat> Archimedes, please leave her alone. I thought I sent you something. It should have came up. I don't know. She trying to sleep. Oh, is she? He messing with her. Can't okay, find it. There. Hello. One second here. I gotta go to face. I mean to YouTube real quick. I keep trying to strain to see. Okay. okay. Yeah, we both Aries, Aries rule. My birthday was Tuesday and my my kids came over. We had a ball. They got me an orange cake. Yeah, the orange cake. Orange uh, roses. Yeah. Mm. It was they were so pretty. Well, I'm about to send it now. Alright. I taught um my grandkids how to play jacks. Oh yeah, they haven't played jacks. They never played jacks. I have my jacks from childhood. Oh, I ordered fun. another set for my granddaughter. She's um sixteen. Can't believe she's sixteen. And I got her a, her own set because she sucks. And I need <laughs> her practice because clearly I am mopping the floor with them. Think about that. <laughs> Metal jacks, wooden floor, rubber hey, ball, you know, you it. line, and I'm still beating them. They suck. <laughs> yeah, y'all both are early, so I guess that's why. Uh, but you survived, and Aphrodite did not. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It was that that last option you picked. Really, yeah. they did tell you. Yeah, that's why he got to come back and get me because if they killed me, now I'm a ghost. So, um, I don't know if everyone would want me to share the. I don't know if I should, do I share the? You think I should share the scene up on screen for those who <clears throat> may have to read along? So, yeah, I saw you. Yeah, I try to. Sure, everybody can participate. Now I had to keep it a little prosy. It's yeah, not more than in the book. Yeah. scripty, but yeah, because I knew you was gonna be reading that. Yeah, it's not identical to what's in the book because this is more script based. All right, so should I pull mine up? Yeah, you can. So you can read yours. I'm just going to try to pull. All right, you just have to let me know because I can't see you anything. I'm just on my screen. Oh, I got you. I got that. Hold on a second. I just got to pull this up for the screen. Uh, all right. Actually, I'm coming back because I feel lost. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you good. All right, you mm -hmm. got it up? Okay, I'm going to go. Yeah, I do because I have to read the opening. All right. Let all right, so everyone, well, this is going to be a scene from the book, from the novel. Um, It is rewritten for script base, so that way we can read it all together. Um, It is not identical to what's in the book, just a heads up on that. But it's pretty darn close. So the dialogue is all pretty, pretty much the same. All right. So the lines that need to be read by Aphrodite and Ed. Ed is going to play Cagliostro, and Aphrodite is going to play Delata. And the lines that you are to read is directly under the name. Any in between parts like this here, that would be read by me, the narrator. 
So I will pop in as you finish your line to do the in between. Oh, and don't read anything in in brackets. <laughs> <laughs> those yeah. are telling you how to deliver. <laughs> yeah. So I, no one reads those. Just like your, yeah. If you deliver that way, it's reading however you want. It's fine. All right. <clears throat> Polyostro grip tightens around Delada's throat, propelling her forcefully against the distant wall, sending tremors rippling through the room. With a quick glance, he checks on Allison's condition. Allison on her knees, struggling for breath, one hand tenderly rubbing her neck while the other clenching the bed sheet tightly. Exhaling heavily, Polyostro refocused his attention on Delada, who snarls and hisses in defense, defiance. Her glowing eyes match his own blue hue, albeit dimmer. She kicks at him, but he swiftly catches her leg with his free hand, holding it firmly by his side. Delada swats at the hand, collapse, um, collapsing her throat. Are you truly fighting me over that mere flashback? Releasing her, he steps backward, straightening his suit as he positions himself between her and Allison. Why are you here? You haven't darkened my door for over a decade. The lava's eyes shift from Allison to Cagliostro and back. He senses her desire to reach her target. If you attempt it, it'll be the final move you ever make. A smile plays on her lips as she inches closer, her face mere inches from his. He holds his ground, their gaze locked in an intense stare down. Obviously, I came to see you. And this is the treatment I get? Over a meal? The lot of glares pass him to Allison, who is still feeling the effect of the attack. The lot of laughs. She must be a true delicacy. Leave now, Delada, before I lose my patience. Delada defies him and stands firm. He steps closer to her. There is only one reason I have never destroyed you, and you know it well. Delada softens, making her long lashes flutter. Cagliostro, my love, my dear, sweet brother. She steps closer to him. You know, I've always let you win, but don't let it go to your head. She runs her fingers through her thick black hair, allowing it to cascade over her bare shoulders once more, as if magically restyled to perfection. She grins up at him. He steps even closer. Fool yourself if you must. You only draw breath at this moment because of our past. But don't push it. We both know I am. I'm much stronger than you. He's her smirk babe. Keep your snack then. I only wanted a taste. She pouts like a child before a temple tantrum. You're so selfish these days, brother. And trust, I will keep coming back to you darken your door whenever it pleases me to do so. Delada storms out faster than she arrives. Delada, a trip! She a really is, uh, yeah, she, she's a bit of a, a, bit of a trip back. <laughs> she is a trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> danger, yeah, danger in the worm means stay away, yeah. You exactly. are that. Exactly. So um, that scene was um, the part I mentioned about Allison because she was attacked by the Lada. Or she was just resting. And the Lada shows up like, I'm about to eat half from dinner. You know, <laughs> you smell taste. I'm I'm like, about Ooh, to that's snack time. That's snack that's time. Out, but my snack is just resting. I'm about to have me a midnight snack. So, you know, so that's what she tried there. And then, you know, Aliastro intervened. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it is, right? ED reads so good, too. So I'm glad you were here to help us out. I appreciate it. I was nervous. I'm like, oh, no, I have to read, and I've never seen what I'm reading. So, <laughs> Well, you did very well, and you had the emotions in it, too. I really liked the way you yeah. read Talia. So it was very good. I, I get nervous, but not 
for reading stuff just because I, I think I'm going to uh, transpose letters mm, and mess up a, a word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty chill. I don't care. I'm fine too. Now, I'm if not. I had it in front of me big, then I wouldn't care. It's like it's giant. Good. Uh, so, Barry, yeah, it's like listening to an audiobook. Yeah. I like doing those kinds of reads. It's cool. But, um, yeah, so I know the Kickstarter is going to be going for oh, for 29 days because today's the first day. Um, let me just double check it real quick. And I will show it. Everyone wants some more. Let me the screen share. Uh, oh, can we do the one with Duncan? I did never got that one from you. Huh? You didn't send that one. I did. I when, when did you send it? <laughs> but I didn't get it. Like if you sent it to like Hold Facebook, on, let me send it again. Or email. I didn't get it. Like I would have. I sent it to email. Yeah, I didn't see it. But I was wondering got, why you didn't respond. Yeah, that's why you know I respond to everything, even when people don't need me to. I'm like, y'all got it. They're like, why is she saying something? But... <laughs> All right, so let's pull oh, this up again. So here is, the, here is the Kickstarter again for those who missed the, the page. Um, actually, about halfway to the goal right now, which is great Yay. with the five backers. And we have 29 days to go. So, And of course, I'll be doing all kinds of small little events and talking it up. So I don't think. I don't really think I have any problem reaching the goal. I have much belief that I will. Um, it is an interesting story, and this is an exclusive to the Kickstarter. So you'll get to read it before anyone else gets to if you back this Kickstarter. So that's a kind of a sweet in the deal kind of situation. Plus all the awesome rewards you can get. And any of this stuff can be added on. So like if you get, let's say, the printed book, like the paperback or whatever, then you literally can add on any of the earlier things but the printed book comes with the ebook of Cagliostro so you can always add on the room within the fractals let's say if you never read them so they're based in the world so you can add on and, and actually you can add on I think you can actually add on any of the like other extra items like the tote bag stickers um you about to scroll down here I love add-ons. <laughs> yeah, so you can add on all those different things. Um, yes, yeah, so like the mug is in the add-on section. So when you actually get a tier, then you can see the add-ons. The map, you can add on the um, album, any of the bookmarks, any of the stuff you see here, then the artwork that's up here. You can add on it. I even added the like some of the the um the lot of items for the vampire package. You can get those on add-ons as well if you don't like to get the the lot of package. So those options are those are good options. So anyway, that's the Kickstarter. I'm gonna scroll slowly for those who have not seen it. And this is the start of it. He is weighed down by obligation. She has no recollection of who she is. And two worlds intermingle and secrets are around every corner. Will their connection oh, survive? No. So that is that. And then the time exclusive that I mentioned. So you'll have around three to four months before it releases to public and other places to buy. Um, but yeah, so this is about the book section, which is pretty much the blurb of the book. And then this section here tells you a little bit about what's inside the book. Where it says, um, it has gothic undertones, vampire hunters, drama, and plot twists, mixed species, mid burn, medium burn, and cosmic horror undertones. And the her first book here shows you that it has werewolves, a billionaire CEO, powerful protagonist, magic, he fell first, vampires, fallen angels, and interspecies romance. So, a lot of stuff in here that you could find interest in. So let's see what happens, and I will keep everyone updated as we go forward. Um, maybe if you check this Kickstarter, I still have my team on here, who my editor was for this book. Elysium Formatting was my formatter, my cover artist, and my character artist. So I like to share that stuff because you never know. You might like something you see, and you're a writer, and you might want to get in on that action. So. You should have 
have it now. Okay. You see, you emailed it? That email yeah. you sent? Okay. Let me go back to inbox. I need to do there this. It is. I will have to go, unfortunately. Oh, you're good. You can leave anytime. That's why I say pop up. But thank you for staying the entire time like that. You did. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad that I could. Yeah, I'm happy that you did. So thank you for being here. We'll be already out of here soon as well. I forget but... to come rescue me. Oh my God. <laughs> I will Gotta save you. her, apparently. I swear I will <laughs> save you with whatever powers or whatever I have. <laughs> All right, Edie, thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right, so um, you, you want to do that thing? So <laughs> I know he's, he's one of my favorite people on YouTube, for real, real. Um, you want to do that thing, or do you want to save it for another stream? It's up to you, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Let's see. Let me let me look at it and see what I think. Hold on. Close up. I down a little bit. Yeah, so I want to keep everybody. It's almost like ten o'clock. Is it? The games, the games, um, took longer than I thought. The games took longer than I thought. Okay. Let me look at this and see if I can make it. I think it's a Duncan and Kali Astro. So, um, I can narrate and play Kali Astro or narrate play okay. Duncan. Who you, you want to play Duncan? I'll play Duncan. I'll uh, play my man. I'll play my man. Of course you will. Let me um share the screen. So I gotta go find can... it though. Are you gonna are you do that? And I'm going to share screen for everyone. So this is the last thing we are going to do, everyone. So you can get another taste. <laughs> the game was fun though. He said for those who lived. <laughs> oh my goodness, too fun. Uh, but it was fun. But um, I'll have another game the next time I do a live stream for Kali Astro. And oh, yeah. I'll be, I won't be having any um, auto help generation help me because I've pressed the time. But so you might be even more danger with me doing it because, yeah, I'll be killing people. <laughs> in my book. That'd be, that'd be often the characters in my book. I just do. Um, so, so Kali Astro has less. Of main main people don't be getting off too much, but like everybody else is unsafe. All right, so let me. Okay, I got it. You got it. All right, I'm gonna share a screen for mine. Let's see, I got the entire screen. I think in this case, window. Mm, oh lord, did I speak too soon? No. Mm, she's fine. All right, so let me. Open it. Same story. Here we go. Um, okay. Wait a minute. Whenever I after that. Whenever you're ready, it's fine. I'm fine. I got it. froze. Hold on. I think it's Betty is like, you got too much going on, girl. I might be able to do it from if you're pulling it up. Let me do it from here. Okay. You just scroll while we read. You cool, you cool with yeah. that? I usually do. That's what I was doing with the other one, even though y'all both had their own copy. I was doing it for the audience. So, y'all, I plan to. So, you're good. Just let me know when you're ready. Bigger for me. There we go. I should be able to. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. All right. So, here we go. Uh, an expected intermission. So, here we go. We are here. All right. The office is huge Victorian elegance with rich mahogany woodwork. A stately desk of, uh, occupies the center, adorned with antique ill ink wells. I can read today. Ink wells and quills. <laughs> Leather armchairs set around. While heavy drapes filter gentle light. Bookshelves line the walls, filled with leather bound tombs. And a crackling fireplace adds warmth above a brass chandelier illuminating the space. Portraits of distinguished figures hang on the walls, creating an atmosphere of refined yeah. <laughs> sophistication. Kali Astro stares <laughs> out into the right. Kali Astro stares out into the night sky, brow frown. 
never again. He returns to his seat, thumbing through sheets of parchment with no real intent. A knock at the door. Kaliasso swirls to face the door square. Enter. Duncan Winterwolf enters. His gaze is intent. Kaliastro cocks his head to the side and sighs. I know you won't heed my advice, but... If you know this, then why are you bothering me? Kaliastro laces his fingers and stares up at Duncan with equal intensity. Duncan steps in and closes the door behind him. I wouldn't recognize the passing of time if you didn't offer some sort of unwanted advice. Get on with it already. Lord Masterson, I feel as though you underestimate Miss Allison. You still know very little of her or how she came to be here. It's suspicious, to be honest. I understand your concerns, Duncan. Believe me, I have had them myself. However, as I don't fully have all the evidence at hand, I will not turn her out. Simple as that. My lord, I did not mean for you to simply cast her away. I think the problem needs a much more direct approach to secure the safety of this manor and its holdings. A possible threat to all of us. Kaliastro stands and quickly makes his way over to Duncan. They stand toe to toe. Let me state this for you. Anyone whose presence is not to harm her. Is that clear? Duncan stands his ground. An orange glow emanates around his frame as he maintains an unbroken eye contact with Kaliastro. As glass. They stand within a few inches of each other. Aliastro's eyes glow as he tilts his head back, looking down his nose at Duncan. Even so, I will watch out for you. Duncan turns on heel and heads for the door. Whether you want me to or not. Duncan leaves. Aliastro rolls his head in a, cir a full circle, cracking his neck, then pulls his collar. He loosens the two buttons at his throat and glances at his desk. An image of the black stone fills his thoughts. I must make a move. <laughs> That's it for the scene. <sighs> so, um, <laughs> Duncan is, yeah. So he's the watcher of Kaliasha, which you will find out. And that is the character that the Narvella, that is the companion Narvella to the first book. Um, that is the one that's offered on the Kickstarter as well. And as I said, the um, Winter Wolf is included in the physical copy of Cagliostro in the back of the book, along with two other tales that is exclusive to the printed version. Um, one of the tales is not offered even in the Kickstarter besides being in the printed copy. Um, that one is called Obsessed. That is a lot of tale, and then the other one is a tale that is about one of the creatures in the world Kaliastro called a Ladrega, which is a fusion of the Daguru and a Lycran, which is a very creepy creature and does some really crazy stuff that I made up. So, um, if you want to read all that craziness and awesomeness of the dark fantasy world Kaliastro, then you know where to go to the Kickstarter to back it so you can get your copy before anyone else does because you know it's that good so you need to <laughs> so um the links will be shared in all of my forward going videos my live streams it is down below for now so if you're watching the replay you can get that plus the kaliastro survival game that we did here live if you want to take part in that then you can do the game and i will email you your responses once i see that you have done the game give me a day or two make sure I see it and get your answers back. It's just a nice incentive to get involved in the world Kali Astro one way or another before you get a copy of the book. So do check out the Kickstarter, share it around to those who are interested in dark fantasy, and maybe something in the book would interest them or you. 
So I really appreciate everyone who came by tonight. So everyone, proud of you. <laughs> thank you. That shared with us their ability to play the survival game. For some, those who some, survived. Some made it, some did not. But I think it was fun nonetheless. Um, and thank you to everyone who backed the Kickstarter so far. Thanks to you, we are already halfway to the goal, happy to say, in the first night. Because it wasn't an all day. So looking forward to this reaching its goals. I have every little bit of faith that it will. It has 29 days. So, and I will be talking it up. And you'll be tired of hearing about it. Okay? <laughs> I won't oh, be. <laughs> I know you won't. So it look forward to different live streams from me um, and others sharing it as well. I will have different. If anyone who wants to help out with sharing about the Kickstarter, about Kali Astro, just hit me up and I have graphics and stuff to share for Instagram, um, for Facebook, for Twitter, for TikTok. I have all kinds of stuff. So um, let me know and I will send it your way through email. So just message me. I can be contacted on any of the socials, Instagram, X, um, Facebook, Threads. I'm on everywhere. TikTok. So can't miss me. All right. I will see you all in the next live stream or video because you know I upload every Sunday with something to do. But now with Kali Astro's Kickstarter here, I will be uploading in the middle of the week or any other day. If you have not seen the character book trailers then go check those out along with the official trailer on my channel and on the kickstarter um the Caliastro character book trailer has been released and so has the allison one um, i'm going to be doing one for the lotta and for duncan but that is forthcoming once um a few other things occur so keep a lookout and i hope you show some more interest in Caliastro tale of the light virgin book one <laughs> Again, thanks everyone, and we will see you. Good night. Good night. <laughs>